Welcome to another episode of the CISN Football Pregame Show. I am your host, Blake Walker. It is our final week of the CISN Football Pregame Show as we are in the Class 5A quarterfinals. If you win tonight, you're headed to Cedar Falls next week to compete for a state championship in the semifinals and then the finals if you make it there. we got a packed show ahead of us and a packed slate of games. Three games on the docket tonight for the CISN Sports Network. We're ready for everyone to get going here this evening. We got coach interviews. We'll take a look at last week's matchups and much, much more. Let's jump right into what happened last week. Jumping in and taking a look at what happened last week across the state in Class 5A. We'll start out with the top. Southeast Polk defeats Linmar 49-9. The Rams are on to the quarterfinals. An easy win for Connor Robley and the crew. Linmar did not have a first down until the third quarter, almost late in the fourth quarter. Cedar Falls defeats Cedar Rapids Kennedy in the Unidome in a wild game. Kennedy got up 19-7 at one point, but could not rally back. Cedar Falls comes back and scores a late touchdown thanks to Drake Kelhaas on a screen play. The Tigers advance to the state quarterfinals. They will take on Southeast Polk tonight. Next pod to look at, Ankeny defeats Johnston 21-9. The Dragons do not get 
the same result as last season. As Ankeny gets their revenge from last season's postseason defeat, the Hawks are on to the quarterfinals where they will play Dowling Catholic, who takes care of business against Sioux City East, a 45 to nothing victory for the Maroons at Duke Williams Stadium. Pleasant Valley and Valley faced off for the second straight year in the postseason, and it's deja vu again. Valley goes on the road to Pleasant Valley and upsets the Spartans, handing them just their second loss of the season. A big game for Damon Head and a couple turnovers and a couple good draws for the win, if you will. Valley defeats Pleasant Valley and is on to the class quarterfinals. Waukee holds off Prairie at Waukee Stadium, a little bit of a ground and pound type game for both teams. Waukee takes care of business and gets past the Hawks. They will take on Valley for a rematch. And then your last games, as it is Ankeny Centennial, who defeats Waukee Northwest 35 to 7. The Jags get their first ever win over Ankeny Centennial, or the Jags get their first win over Waukee Northwest. It was all Centennial on this one. They hold Sam Johnson to under 100 yards on both the ground and in the air. And Bentendorf gets revenge on Iowa City High after losing to them just two weeks ago. Bentendorf comes out and defeats Iowa City High 32 to 21, and it will be Bentendorf take it on Ankeny Centennial in Bettendorf. We'll step aside and we'll be back with your coach interviews and much, much more. You're watching the CISN Football Pregame Show. Hi, Joe the Car Guy, head coach of Westside Auto Pros. When your car is on injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. So bring it here to Westside Auto. I have the team of experts that can fix every automotive injury, whether it's a fractured joint, a broken part, or if your car just got its bell rung. We'll do a complete physical to make sure your car is game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to Westside Auto Pros and we'll get you back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you guys are talking out there. Move it, move it, move it. It's the DeArmond Ford Indianola kickoff event. Score big on a new F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 66 months plus 37.50 rebate. Get charged up with a Mach-E and lease for $4.49 a month. All Americans Ford Escape and Edge. New Edge for $3.99 a month flex buy. And the new Escape 2.9% for 75 months plus $500 rebate. Join our winning team at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you, you got ripped off, didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Welcome back to the CISN Football Pregame Show. I'm your host, Blake Walker. It's time for the Coach Interview segment of tonight's pregame show. I had a chance to sit down with Coach Wilson of Dowling Catholic and Coach Bauer of Ankeny ahead of their big game tonight. Here with Coach Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic. Coach, first of all, congratulations on the win against Sioux City East. Home game at Duke Williams Stadium. Always got to like that. It's one of the nicest locker rooms in the state. Uh, talk about the experience playing there. You guys play at Valley, home games there, but... You know, postseason's always been Duke Williams Stadium. What's it been like always playing there? Oh, it's great. And and uh, Des Moines East and Grandview both have been uh, great to us. And, you know, we started that several years ago when, when obviously Valley would have home games in the playoffs. And 
we would find something different and we've just kept going back. It's worked out so well and, and uh, certainly appreciate their hospitality. Let's talk about the win against Sioux city East a 45 to nothing victory. Talk about that game, pretty standard playoff game. You guys took care of business. You know, some teams can sleepwalk into the first round, but you guys seem like you handle business. Well, I thought our kids did a great job. We, we started fast. Uh, they turned the ball over early. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the ball game and, and we kind of jumped on that opportunity and and uh, we got things clicking uh, fairly quickly and and got a few touchdowns on the board. I think we ended up having three two point conversions to our first three scores of the game, which is certainly something different. And uh, unfortunately, their quarterback goes down with an injury. And I I think that took some of the wind out of them at that point in time. And, and they really weren't throwing the ball downfield and gave us an opportunity to play a lot of kids and, and uh, which is something that we certainly try to do and becomes a challenge with the running clock, but we'd rather have it that way than not. You get Ankeny this week, who you beat earlier this season, 35, 14, couple late scores kind of made it seem closer than it was. They're a young team given everything, a junior quarterback and a junior running back. How much have you guys looked back on that game earlier this season? I know it was so early in the season, but you know, do you go back a ton and look at that or you just think, okay, they're a much different team than they were now. They've won a couple here in a row, lost a close one to Valley, but they seem like they're getting things together. Oh, I think they're a good football team and certainly deserve to be in the state quarterfinals. And I would say we, you look at that first game. I'm not sure that, that that's all you look uh, at. You know, I think they had success running the football uh, versus Johnston and, and uh, obviously uh, Acres is a is a physical mismatch on the outside. I think Earl Myers very good, and you know you mentioned the young quarterback. Well, after ten games, they're not young anymore. Um, you know that he's got a lot of uh, playing experience under his belt, and uh, they've certainly played well as you've mentioned, and and uh, it's a game we look forward to. How do you keep your teams focused on a week by week basis? It's hard to think about like, all right, if we win, we're going to Cedar Falls next week. And you guys have been lucky to get to Cedar Falls several times in the last couple of years. But how do you keep it to keeping the team's focus on here and now and not what's next? Yeah, uh, not always easy, uh, sometimes easier said than done. But the, at the end of the day, if you don't play well and don't get the job done, there is no uni dome and there is no next week. And uh, you would hope that that would get their attention. Um, you know, we fortunately have had some kids that have been through this and, and, uh, they kind of understand that not that we're a veteran team, especially defensively, we're fairly young and, and, uh, you hope that, uh, the older kids rub off on some of the younger ones in this case. I got to ask you, you know, you guys have been fortunate. Dowling Catholic's been at the state volleyball tournament this week, obviously lost today in the championship game, but how has practices looked? I know not everybody can go on certain days or whatnot. I know almost everybody was allowed to go today. What have practices looked like this week in terms of scheduling? Do you practice today as we record this on Thursday? Yeah, um, we altered everything on, on Monday. Um, you know, it was kind of a couple of different things. We played, you know, a noon ball game, and, and you would think that you might be able to get things uh, in or you might be able to start a little bit late, but it was also a beggar's night around here. Um, and so coaches with little kids. So uh, we went at seven 30 at night um, on Monday and then Tuesday and Wednesday were normal. And, and uh, you know, fortunately we played 10 o'clock uh, today and we didn't have school and, and uh, there was a lot of people at those ball games and uh you know, our girls did a great job, just came up short today, and uh, congrats to Walkie Northwest. Well, Coach, we appreciate your time, and good luck to you and the Maroons on Friday night. All right, thank you. Thank you, Coach. You Once again, we want to take a moment to thank all the coaches that have chatted with us all season long. We greatly appreciate it, giving you, the viewers, an inside look into what they're thinking going into Friday night's matchups. We'll be back and take a look at your matchups here on Friday night as we prepare for the Dome next week. You're watching the CISN Football Pregame Show. Hi, Joe the Car Guy, head coach of Westside Auto Pros. When your car is on injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. So bring it here to Westside Auto. I have the team of experts that can fix every automotive injury, whether it's a fractured joint, a broken part, or if your car just got its bell rung. We'll do a complete physical to make sure your car is game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to Westside Auto Pros and we'll get you back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you got your dog in out there. Move it, move it, move it. Free Godfather's Pizza.
begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. New trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's Truckload Kickoff Event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The Truckload Kickoff Event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Welcome back to the CISN Football Pregame Show. I'm your host, Blake Walker. It's time to take a look at the games to watch tonight, a.k.a. the four games going on in Class 5A. There are four tickets to be punched at the state tournament next week in Cedar Falls. Southeast Polk hosts Cedar Falls. The Tigers get a big win over Kennedy last week. Southeast Polk took care of Linmar. It'll be a very talented defense full of stars for Cedar Falls coming up to Southeast Polk to take on the Rams, whose offense has had their way with several teams this year. Dowling Catholic goes back to Duke Williams Stadium over on Des Moines East High School campus. They will take on the Ankeny Hawks. You all remember that classic game at the Dome a couple of years ago. The Maroons look to get back to the state tournament and have a shot to repeat or have a chance to go against Southeast Polk once again. Ankeny Centennial heads to Bettendorf to take on the Bulldogs. What should be a phenomenal game. Two very good defenses that showed out last week. And two very talented offenses that can get rolling at any time. And then Waukee and Valley face off. They faced off already once this year. Waukee defeated Valley 37-15. But Valley is a much different team than they were back then. Waukee tries to make their first trip to the Dome ever since the split of Waukee and Waukee Northwest. Southeast Polk Cedar Falls, Waukee Valley, Dowling Catholic Ankeny can all be seen tonight here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. That will do it for us here on the CISN Football Pregame Show. I'm your host, Blake Walker. I appreciate everyone for watching all season long. My producer, Randy, produces and edits all the shows here all season long. I'm sure he appreciates it just as much. Thank you for joining us every week before your Football Friday. And thank you for watching and enjoy the games tonight on the Central Iowa Sports Network.
Baptist will advance to the UD Dome for the semifinals next Friday night. Duke Williams Stadium here on Des Moines East Side as we get set for high school playoff football. The large schools, Class 5A, it's Dowling Catholic hosting the Ankeny Hawks. Mark Abadale, Matt Mandering, John Chido as uh, Johnny is on the field. And uh, you heard uh, Coach Wilson's comments before the game. And, of course, the captains are going to meet for the coin flip. And, uh, Matt and John, anything you want to add before we uh, get set for kickoff? Johnny, we'll start with you. Beautiful night. Let's get the game conditions. 54 degrees. Northwest wind around five miles per hour and 56% uh, humidity. And it's already been sunset for just about an hour. So that's the current conditions. What's it like in the field compared to a week ago, John? Oh, it's, it's night and day. It, it's amazing how, how, how one week the temperature has increased 30 degrees with zero wind. And like I said, this is a fall atmosphere game. It, you can just... It just feels nervous. You can just feel that nervousness with, with the playoff game, uh, and, and it should be. Second round with two good teams going tonight. I think uh, everybody at home listening and watching is, is, is uh, stay tuned. It's going to be a great ball game. Yeah, no question about that, John. And, uh, yes, CISN, we'll, they'll be picking up our audio. We'll be uh, uh, doing the simulcast. And, uh, Matt, any comments? You heard Coach Wilson and some of his thoughts, but uh, we're doing the coin flip as we speak. Yeah, you know, he said uh, schematically neither team's going to change a whole lot of, of things. I just think it's going to be, you know, it's all about momentum and who can get that first big play, get that first turnover, make sure you minimize mistakes. I mean, that's what we say a lot of times in the playoffs, but it holds true. Like Dowling won the toss and deferred, so I, Ankeny will receive, and, and away we go. All right, well, we'll take a break. This will be our final break before kickoff as we get a word from uh, Dr. Dan Ryan, the president of Dowling Catholic High School, and our pregame fr prayer with Father Reed Flood. And up next, the kickoff, Dowling and Ankeny here on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network and CISN. I'm Amanda with Holtz Plumbing and Heating. Did you know that your water heater is the hardest working appliance in your home? Depending on where you live, hard water and sediment can age out your water heater in as little as eight years. Holt stocks all the water heater options you would ever need. Multiple tank sizes, styles, and very popular tankless options. Our plumbing professionals will deliver one to your home, remove the old one, and install your new one all in a day's work, even on weekends. For all your water heater needs, let Holt handle that. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. When you go home, you'll feel good about what you did, and you know, you're doing it for the kids. If they don't have us, they don't have these games. And uh, back deep for the uh, Ankeny Hawks, set near their, uh, near their end zone. 
as the ball goes into the end zone, and it's going to be returned. Yeah. On the return right at the goal line, hit and dropped at the 11-yard line, which I'm surprised the ball must have broke the plane. But uh, He must have kept it out. His feet were in, and the ball never got in is what the official's saying. Caden Hank is on the return, but uh, that was right near the goal line. Nonetheless, first and 10, Ankeny on their own spot at the 12-yard line. So good defense. The special teams is so important, Matt. We've talked – about this all year, yeah. but Dowling has just lately has pinned uh, offenses deep after kickoffs. You know, I was talking out there talking to Coach Remy yesterday and at practice and just proud of how the Schumacher kid has come along and, and how they could spot those kickoffs like that's pretty amazing. No question about it. All right. Ankeny on their first play. Back to throw is Luke Anderson. Fires the ball downfield. The pass is incomplete. Try to hit his intended receiver on a crossing route and couldn't catch up with him. He had a couple receivers. We're going to see several as both teams have multiple groupings with their offense. For Ankeny's offense, Caden Hankus, number five, is at one tailback. The other one is Daniel Laramie. He's not in with this set. Wide receivers, Evan Earlmiker, number two. Devin Akers, number 11. Mason Randolph, number 18. The tight end is Carson Sommerfeld. Now they'll flip-flop. Devin Akers from the left side to the right side. He's kind of a multiple tight end receiver. The handoff goes to the tailback and uh, getting pretty good yardage is Hankus who gets the start. He gets up near the 19 yard line and gain a seven. That first pass was intended for Summerfield. And, uh, you know, and as, as we talked in the pregame, they did get a chip on him as he came off the line of scrimmage, threw the timing off, and Anderson was rushed a little bit to get that pass out. And uh, it fell incomplete. Now there, Hankus had a nice cut. It was designed to go up the middle, bounce it outside a little bit, got some plus yardage and, you know, seven yards on that play. All right, here's Anderson back to throw on third down. He fires it out near side. It's caught and hit out of bounds. And at the first down marker is the receiver that time, and that is out of the backfield, Caden Hankus. And that's something we kind of talked about in the pregame with Coach is Hank is, is that versatile back. He can run it, but he can also, he can also catch and run. Yeah, and there they just they set it up really well, slid Hank is out, and he was the safety valve on that play. Flipped it to him, and he got the yardage for the first down. First down, Hank at their own 25-yard line. Gain is six on that last pass. Anderson on the handoff, and this time it's the second back that rolls through, and that's Daniel Laramie, and he gets across the 30, and he's up near a first down at the 35-yard line. And that offensive line right there gouged a nice hole for him to get through it. Evan Spence is 6'1", 255. Jack Dorfler, or yeah, Dorfler at 6'1", 255. Uh, A.J. Heck at 6'1", 200. Tristan Mullis, 6'4", 225. And Lucas Beroth at 6'1", 250. There are a lot of big men in there, and uh, mostly juniors and seniors. So an experienced offensive front. No question about it. Now here is a handoff once again and getting a couple yards, pushing the pile forward up to the... 39-yard line is Laramie again. Daniel Laramie, a sophomore tailback, wears number 21. He and Hankus, who wears number 5, Hankus a junior. So a lot of youth for Ankeny, and he gets a gain of four. And with that, the size that they have, Dowling's defensive front with the two Beaver twins, Owen Pins, and, and Zach Smith, who's in there at the start, they're not overly big. Well, I should say that. Beaver and both Beaver, 232 40. They're pretty good size, but they're sophomores. And uh, they've got to they've got to get a little push there, get a little something back, and now they let them get pushed around. Second and six, Ankeny line of scrimmage, their own 39, and now an option play, trying to turn the corner and can't is the tailback who got the option, and it was Hankus back in there at tailback and. He goes nowhere, no gain. It'll bring up third and six for the Hawks. I couldn't see who came up from the outside help there, but there, there's the advantage of having Zach Smith in there at that defensive end position, what they call the whip. And uh, he was able to, that play was, was a flip outside, toss to the right, and he's able to release from the block, get outside and get a hand on him and to slow him up and makes a really nice play on second down. All right, third and six, Ankeny. Line of scrimmage, their own 39. No score. Ankeny has taken the opening kickoff and has gotten a couple first downs up to the Dowling 39. Five seconds on the play clock. Anderson is trying to get everybody set, and they're going to call timeout. So the Hawks will take a timeout. We will, too, with 9.16 to go first quarter. No score. Dowling and Ankeny here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. 
I'm Amanda with Holtz Plumbing and Heating. Did you know that your water heater is the hardest working appliance in your home? Depending on where you live, hard water and sediment can age out your water heater in as little as eight years. Holtz stocks all the water heater options you would ever need. Multiple tank sizes, styles, and very popular tankless options. Our plumbing professionals will deliver one to your home, remove the old one, and install your new one all in a day's work, even on weekends. For all your water heater needs, let Holt handle that. Uh, some of the things I've learned from sports are being a good leader, and that means not always just saying what's right, but showing by example. I've learned that being a good role model is so important because there's many little eyes on you and they watch everything you do. So as long as you're doing the right thing, then they will understand that that is what they're supposed to be doing also. What I really have learned is strong leadership and self-discipline. And we're back here at Williams Stadium out of the timeout. Ankeny goes back to pass, third and six, and the quarterback Anderson hits Andrew Brandhorse over the middle and a first down Hawks at the Dowling 41 and a very nice play. And now the Hawks up to the line of scrimmage at the Dowling 41 yard line. Back to throws Anderson. Now penalty flag out of hurt holding and now Anderson is going to be hit and knocked out of bounds and he'll lose yardage and uh, let's see if Dowling's going to take the penalty or the loss on the play here Matt. Yeah, it's a good question, Mark, because the loss ends up being about a loss of five yards, about well, four yards. It's going to be a hold, which will be a 10-yard loss. So i got to imagine they're going to take the hold on this. We'll see what Coach thinks. The last reception by Brandhorse on third and And they're going to decline it. Yeah, I thought I wondered yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah, it was a 20-yard catch by Brandhorse. Gave the Hawks a first down for the first time tonight in Dowling Territory. So the Maroons will take the play, and it will be a four-yard sack for the Maroons back to the 45 after quarterback Luke Anderson, who's normally not a runner, had nowhere to go, and then he couldn't get out of bounds in time to, to get the, no. uh, the tackle by Dowling. And they had a definite hold. I believe it was on Owen Pins. He couldn't get loose, and, and Owen Pins had him cornered, but the hold and nowhere to go. All right, second and 14, Ankeny from the Dowling 45. Anderson back to throw, looks right, throws right, through behind his receiver, but it's caught. Nice catch that time by Earlmeyer. Evan Irmile, number two, and it gets it down to the 40-yard line. So it'll bring up third and eight for the Hawks at the Dowling, I'm going to call it 39-yard line. He curled into that soft spot in the zone, kind of right over the middle. They're finding a little bit of a gap in the middle. And the, the pass to Brandhorse went over top of the linebackers. This was in front of the linebackers and allowed them to rally and come up, but it creates a third and manageable for them at third and eight. 7.55 remaining, first quarter, no score. Anderson back to throw, throws it over the middle, and he lost it up. The pass is caught and stacked up by Dowling. They're going to give him forward progress down to the 30-yard line, and that'll be good enough for a Ankeny first down. And that was an incredible catch as he had a high point to catch at the top uh, of the throw there, Matt. Was that Brandhorst again, or was that Summerfield? I, I couldn't tell who which one it was. But uh, he did. He had to go up and high point that football, and Anderson got hit just as he's releasing it. Uh, that defensive front got to him, but he was able to go up and get it over top of the Dowling defenders. Five receivers set, empty backfield. Anderson back to throw. Ankeny with the first down. Now trying to get outside the pocket, he does. Anderson will run with the football, gets to the 28-yard th line, I think loses his uh, play sheet and is knocked down there at the 28 after a gain of two. Yeah, he goes out, and, and uh, it's just a hand warmer. You don't need that tonight. Um, <laughs> you know, he, he does get loose. They get a block in there to spring him as he was being pursued at the defensive front, but he scrambles, which he doesn't do a lot, and got a couple yards. Hawks with a second and eight from the Dowling 28 after they take the opening kickoff. Three receivers to the right and one to the left. They have one back in the backfield. This time it's Caden Hankus who had just under 200 yards rushing a week ago against Johnston in the first playoff game. Luke Anderson at quarterback. They give us to Hankus right up the gut, and he's hit and dropped right at the 25. They'll bring up third and four for the Ankeny at the Dowling 25. Dylan Manning coming up and filling the hole there for the Maroons as he caught Hankus right in the middle. Uh, it allowed him to get the short gain. They're, they're getting a crease up front. And right there now it showed that, you know, they weren't getting to that second level. Manning was able to run free, hit the ball in the hole, and limit the gain on the play. Evan Spence, Jack Dorfler, 
A.J. Heck, Tristan Mullis, and Lucas B. Roth are the offensive linemen, left tackle to right tackle, respectfully, along with uh, Carson Sommerfeld and the backup tight end, Nathan Richmond. Probably right. a lot more pass than we'd expected. Yeah. You know. For now, third and five for Ankeny. Anderson back to throw. Now flush in the pocket, rolls to his right, looking back left, fires it out, and it's caught, and that is Evan Erlmeyer coming back, and he's got the first down at the 15-yard line of Dowling, a gain of 10. Yeah, nice play by Anderson as Dowling lost contain on that play and allowed Anderson to run free to the wide side of the field. Manning came up late, left his spot in the middle of the field, which created the opening for the receiver. They get the first down, and Manning's got to come up and force that run, and so or to force that, that pass, so he's doing his thing. This will be the 13th play of this Ankeny drive. They put back on the ground as they hand it off to Daniel Laramie, and he gets inside the 10 down to about the 9-yard line, a gain of 6. He lunges forward after getting hit behind the line of scrimmage and lunges forward and gets some positive yardage for uh, Ankeny as they are continuing to drive down the field here in this first quarter. Yeah, without a huddle, a little bit of tempo, if you will, and I think they got Dowling to go offsides, and they did. Offside Dowling, that'll pack on five more. That'll be given an automatic first down. It'll be first and goal Hawks, I believe, after they... Uh, and that was, that was one of those things where they weren't going to call a number because there was about five guys that went. So it'll be first and goal, Ankeny. I'll put the ball at the four-yard line of Dowling after the penalty. This will be the 14th play of the Hawk drive as Dowling was offside. Our officials tonight, Jeff, Jeff Hansen. Our umpire is Phil Johnson. Griffith Carr is the head linesman. Line judge Josh Bevins and the back judge Nate Stege. First and goal, Ankeny. Out of the shotgun is Anderson. They give his Laramie. He slips the tackle and he's stacked up. Inside the five, down near the one-yard line is where they're going to mark forward progress. A gain of three. It'll be second and goal from the one. Yeah, inside the one. That was a nice push from that offensive front, and they were able to man up and, and get a push in that defensive line. And so here you are, second and goal from the two-yard line, first drive of the football game, and this is exactly what Ankeny, you know, wanted to do with the football is ball control, march down the field, chew up clock, and then now here they are with a good opportunity. They're knocking on the door of an 88-yard drive, taking the opening kickoff from their own 12-yard line, and this will be the 15th play of the drive. Second and goal, Hawks from the Dowling one, and they fake the end around. Anderson with it, fires in the end zone, and he finds the receiver sliding in there. Touchdown, Hawks. Ankeny with the touchdown, and that was a well-played place ball into the backside of the end zone. Yeah, it was a crosser, I believe, from the backside. Johnny would be able to help there, but he threw it in the middle of that in, of the mess. Carson Summerfold. It was Summerfold, the uh, tight end, looping in the backside, and and uh, Anderson hit him in right on the numbers, low, and right and right where he needed to catch it. So the Hawks now will attempt the extra point as Ankeny takes the opening kickoff and strikes first. Extra point by. Harrington coming up. Ryan's ball is down. His kick is up, and it is good on the hold by Kinnick Voss. Ankeny 7, Dowling Catholic nothing. 4 one to go first quarter, and we'll return to Duke Williams Stadium on Des Moines' east side with Class 5A playoff football here on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network and CISN. Dowling playoff football is presented by Annie and Gabe Mitchell Real Estate and brought to you by Clemens Services. Straub Marketing, Homes by DePhillips, Eileen's Cookies, The Tavern, Sioux City Pickermans, Wendy Kriegshauser with Coldwell Banker, The Greater Des Moines Catholic Football League, Kitchen and Bath Company, and the Dana Ramont family. You go home you'll feel good about what you did and you know you're doing it for the kids if they don't have us they don't have these games hey, we're back here at duke williams stadium playoff high school football aiken leading dowling seven or nothing here's summer here's a kickoff rather 
by Harrington, and it's fielded by Dowling Catholic at the five-yard line. The Maroons on the return and getting up to about the 30-yard line on the return for Dowling Catholic. It's Zach Smith, and that's where the Maroons will have their first offensive series, believe it or not, after uh, most about yeah. 10 minutes, yeah. about nine and a half minutes off the clock, and Dowling's offense takes the field at the 30-yard line. Let's go down to John Chidel for our sideline report. Johnny, that was quite a drive. 15 plays, 88 yards. Ankeny takes the opening kickoff and scores. Yeah, Ankeny's uh, did a nice job spreading Dowling's defense out, getting those one-on-one -on -one matchups, especially with the wide receivers on linebackers and a lot of over-the-middle stuff, and they, they just taking it, chipping away, chipping away, nothing big, but they did a good job spreading Dowling's defense off and uh, taking advantage of those matchups. Dowling goes on the ground, uh, first play of the game. Thank you, John, as the Maroons get Rashad Davis, the ball carrier from their own 31. He gets a yard up to the 32-yard line. Don't you think uh, Ankeny's going to keep an eye on Rashad tonight? Our up front for Dowling, the offensive line, left tackle to right tackle, respectively. L Kyle Rockers. Joe Freilak, Max Shelton, the center, Nate Agos, and Isaiah Seymour on the right side. Tight ends are Will Leifker and Charlie Darnell with the fullback, Ian Middleton and Jackson Miller trading off. Second and nine, Dowling. Cataldo at quarterback. And the, he fakes the handoff to Rashad Davis, fires it out. The pass is caught, but Hank Brown tries to spin out of a tackle and can't, and he'll lose yardage. Great coverage by the Hawks that time. Mm -hmm. They, and they've got four guys out there on the two that they're covering, and that quick, they're trying to take away that quick pass, getting Hank out there in, in the open, and they were right on top of that play, and Hank had nowhere to go for a one-yard loss. They're just going to give it no gain on the play, so it'll bring up second down, or third down and nine for Dowling. Toddle now in the pistol formation. He'll move Lifeker. To the left side is a tight end. Here's a snap by Shelton. Back to throws Cataldo. Looking over the middle. He fires off. Ball is tipped and incomplete. Knocked out in and out of the hands of the intended receiver by Dowling. That's Sam Sandvig with the uh, deflection and incomplete. And will bring up fourth down. Nice play for Sandvig coming from his safety position and breaking that play up. Uh, getting his hand on the ball and not allowing the, the pass to get completed. Uh, Dante would put it right on where it was supposed to be, and, and without that breakup, that would have been a, a completion. So, nice play. So, the Maroons will be forced to punt. Zach Smith coming in, averaging 39 yards a punt. He'll stand back at his own 20-yard line. 7 to nothing, Ankeny. 2.30 left to go in the first quarter here at Duke Williams Stadium. Maroons awaiting the snap, and here it gets it away. It's a spirally... Kick to the near sideline. It's going to sit and land right at the 40-yard line, so there'll be no return by the Hawks. And that's where Ankeny will take over, first and 10, right around their own 37-yard line. With uh, Ankeny leading 7 and up, let's go back down on the sidelines. John Chido will give us an update down there. Yeah, Ankeny's defense has a lot of guys within that tackle box. They have uh, the, Even their safeties are only about 8 yards off the ball. And they disguise their coverages very well. Uh, it looked like that they're, that they're sending blitzes and stuff like that with the linebackers, and then they're dropping back into coverage. And that kind of what happened there with that last throw from uh, Cataldo that he tried to complete. All right, Hawks with it from their own 37. Handoff goes to the tailback and hit and stood up at the line. The Maroons make some adjustments, you can tell, Matt. And no gain in the play as the ball carrier that time uh, was hit and dropped, and that was Caden Hankus, the junior tailback. It was, and, and they did stack it up a little bit more there at the line of scrimmage. You see, you got Ian Middleton in there now, a little more weight in there, and uh, it looks like Ringwelski in there as well. And so they're going to give a little more heat inside, and they, they, that offensive line got way too much push in that first series, and I think that's what's going to be the determinant here as we move forward. Minute 45 remaining here in the... First quarter, 7 0 Ankeny. Hawks with a second and 10 after that last play. Quarterback is Luke Anderson out of the shotgun. Inside handoff and goes once again to Hankus and gets across the 40, maybe to the 41 for a gain of four. to bring up third down and six. Ian Middleton on the stop there for the Maroons and was able to get a hand on Hankus there and drag him down and, and Manning cleaning up on top of that pile. Uh, again, there they got a little bit better. That it was a stalemate at the line of scrimmage, and which allows those linebackers to get up there and do their thing. Good play by Ian, and and uh, now it creates that third and long. 
Devin Akers split out wide to the right. Luke Anderson at quarterback. He's got two receivers to the left, but Akers all by himself. And Jake Kruger out, but he does have some safety help on him as we uh, survey the field. Five seconds on the play clock. Anderson, here's the snap out of the shotgun. Pressure's on. Steps out of the pocket. He's going to be sacked. Sacked in the backfield by Isaac Beaver inside the 35. Back to the 34-yard line. Matt, a seven-yard loss. Yeah, I think that defensive front got a little talking to at that last break because they came out with a lot more energy on that series. And there you could see Isaac Beaver just blew that play up and, and was able to get to Anderson in a hurry. Didn't allow him to get downfield. Nice sack and uh, the three and out that the defense needed to get. Seven-yard loss, as I mentioned, so Isaac Beaver. We got a little sack. bit of a weird formation coming out here for Ankeny. We don't know what's going on. It's oh, they're the going to let the yeah. quarter run They're going to let the clock run down. Yep. We've uh, inadvertently come to the end of the first quarter is what we are. to say with the score. Ankeny <laughs> seven and Dowling Catholic nothing alongside Matt Mender I'm John Ch and John Child. This is Mark Amadale here on CISN and the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Hi, Joe the Car Guy, head coach of Westside Auto Pros. When your car is on injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. So bring it here to Westside Auto. I have the team of experts that can fix every automotive injury, whether it's a fractured joint, a broken part, or if your car just got its bell rung. We'll do a complete physical to make sure your car is game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to Westside Auto Pros and we'll get you back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you guys are dogging it out there. Move it, move it, move it. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. And we're back here at uh, Duke Williams Stadium underway here in the second quarter as Ankeny punts on fourth down from their own 34-yard line, and the punt goes out of bounds in Dowling territory. They'll spot out of bounds. Dowling will have it first and 10 from the Rune. 37 underway here in the second quarter with the Ankeny Hawks leading Dowling 7-0, and there's another 7-0 lead there, yeah. Matt Mandring. Bettendorf is up on Centennial, 7-0 in the first quarter down there at Bettendorf. So... Quad Cities area, or Eastern Iowa, whatever you want to call it. Pistol formation is Dowling's offense on the field. They give it to Rashad Davis, and he just kind of follows his blockers over the right side, gets up to the 40-yard line for about a three-yard gain. It'll bring up second down and seven as Maroons go to the ground attack. Dowling going right to left in front of you, wearing the Maroon home jerseys, white pants, and white helmets. Anchoring in their all-white road uniforms with the Hawk wing on their helmet. And Rashad picked up nice yardage over the right side. Nate Agos, Isaiah Seymour on that right side of the offensive line there, Matt. Yeah, he was able to just climb behind those guys and never really hit the accelerator because he didn't have a chance to. And uh, got the yardage. No, no explosive play here yet. Pistol formation. And handoff goes to Rashad Davis again. He's got the first down, crosses midfield, and shoestring tackle right at midfield into... Uh, Hawk territory, a nice uh, tackle that time by Aaron Warno, Angelo Warno with the tackle. I said yet. You know, and there you see the explosiveness that uh, Rashad Davis possesses as he makes the first guy miss and then explodes straight up field for a big gain. 12-yard gain, first down Dowling. Line of scrimmage, the Ankeny 48, 7 to nothing. Ankeny leads. Hand off Rashad Davis, skips a tackle, now in the secondary at the 40, and finally brought down from behind by the Hawks. Dylan Doherty inside the 35. They're going to spot him all the way down to the 31-yard line. The Maroons going Temple here. That's one of the things. If you're going to be an offensive lineman for Dowling Catholic, you got to be able to pull. And right there was Max Shelton, the center, coming around and leading Davis up the hole on that play. 17-yard run, first down. They'll go to, at it again. Hand off Rashad Davis. This time he's brought down from behind by Doherty after a short gain inside the 30. And it'll bring up second down for the Maroons. It was, it was the same design on that last play right there, the play before, it, with Shelton coming out and pulling. I, I believe that's Shelton, or maybe it is Agos coming around the corner. I think it was Agos on that one. And uh, Davis couldn't quite reach him, 
to extend and get away. Doherty makes a great play. Four straight running plays to start this drive. It's second down and eight for Dowling after a two-yard gain from the Hawk 29. Now penalty flags down. Play clock was down to 15, and we've got procedure against Dowling. So that'll back it up. That'll one, of the, one of the things you're going to see from this Ankeny front right there, they ran a guy up into the line of scrimmage that caused the Dowling offense to jump. But they do a lot of stunts with those three guys up front. They're going to loop them. They're going to do different kinds of things. And if you can catch them in that wrong, in that wrong situation, it's going to lead to an explosive play. Right there, they fake the blitz up inside, cause the, the offense to jump, and it creates a second and long. All right, second down and 13 after the five-yard penalty. Ball back to the Hawk 34-yard line. Pistol formation. Cataldo at quarterback out of the shotgun. And read option. Cataldo will keep the football, and he's hit and dropped as he gets close to the 30-yard line, maybe just to the 31, a gain of three. And right now, Doherty's making every play. And he went out, and he stayed with Cataldo on that play, makes a nice read, stays with him, cuts him down to create the third and long. And uh, it's one of those times now where you start as an offense, you say, okay, someone's got to get a pad on him. You know, we got to get a pad on number four. He's having a heck of a game here in this first quarter. Dowling for the first time tonight goes five receivers, three to the left, two to the right. Empty backfield, no tight end. Here's a snap. Cataldo looks left, sets up, has plenty of time, now wants to run, and he fires it downfield. The pass is caught right at the 20-yard line. They're going to say first down Dowling. What a catch out there in the open field. That was a great catch, and that is, that is Trig Troyer. That's Trig Troyer. Trig Troyer. Johnny, weren't we talking about him today? Yes, we were. He's a great possession receiver. And he made a tremendous catch in traffic and then took the hit. That was a rocket by Cataldo on the run right between the numbers. Great pass. 11-yard reception, first down. Trig Troyer. Handoff goes to Rashad Davis, and he grinds his way over the A-gap on the right side. <laughs> And down near the 18-yard line, if that. It's tough going down there as the offensive line are really battling out tonight, Matt. And they are. And, again, that was um, – it looked like Sam Sandvig came up and make that play, um, or it was Jacob Moorfield. But, anyway, they, they've come up, and they, as Johnny alluded to earlier, they're playing those safeties and everybody tight uh, up there to stop the run. they got a lot of guys within eight yards of the line of scrimmage. All right, the ball on the 18-yard line, gain of two. Second and eight, Dowling, from the 18 of Ankeny, Dowling – Trailing 7-0. Now they fake the handoff. Cataldo just follows his blockers. He's in the line. He'll be shy of the first down as he's pushed down near the 12-yard line for a gain to six. Now we used to call that play, you know, it was like a, a midline play. And what you do is you fake, the, you fake it to the running back up the middle, up the A-gap, and then you have the quarterback follow him. And so that's really what that play looked like as Cataldo just followed Davis up the, up the A-gap and gets a nice run, and to your point, you know, as you were saying, Mark, he was even he was just crowding behind the line and, and getting the yardage. So Rashad Davis replaced Ian Middleton as the blocking yeah, back. That's is right. What you're saying well, he's okay. a decoy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, third and two, Dowling. The line of scrimmage is the Ankeny 12, seven and nothing Hawks, and the Maroons put it on the ground. They get the first down all the way down inside. The five-yard line, first and goal Dowling, and that's Rashad Davis following his blockers as he follows the mesh, and that's yeah. an eight-yard gain. And you see Rashad Davis coming out and says, All right, let's get this next play going. Let's go. And, uh, you know, right now the offensive line is starting to get get their leverage points and getting some push. And uh, Lifeker comes out, and uh, so this looks like it's going to be a wide formation. They're going to try and spread them out here down at the goal line offensively. Yeah, Curtis Horace, wide to the right. If you're watching well, on TV, gonna, to the top of the screen. Timeout. And now Dowling's going to take a timeout, and we'll keep it here with 7.06 to go here in the second quarter. Ankeny leading Dowling 7 0 here on Iowa Catholic Radio as we stream tonight with the Central Iowa Sports Network. We want to appreciate all their assistance as usual. Justin Wolber along with uh, Griffin Graby, and I'm not sure who's got the other camera, but. Uh, they're all here tonight, and uh, we appreciate their help as, it, as we simulcast. Let's go down to John Chido. Johnny, I know you've uh, been taking notes, right? Uh, give us an update of some of the thoughts you have with this drive, which started back at the Dowling 37. Well, you know how we talked in pregame. It's a numbers game up front, and Dowling's doing a lot of shifting with their tight end and their fullback and trying to trying to identify where the blitz is and where number six is lined up, their middle linebacker. He'll kind of identify where, where they're going to come from with their blitz. And they, when they shift that tight end in the fullback, now Dowling has the numbers, and they've been taking advantage of that. And the, and the offense line has done a much better job this drive of controlling the line of scrimmage. 
Dowling Catholic in the Bozen the Flores Red Zone. Say more with Bozen online at bozen.com, 515-244-ROWS. That's 515-244-7673. Bozen makes the moment mean more. All right, first and goal, Dowling, at the four-yard line. This will be the 10th play of this Dowling drive. Handoff goes to the tailback. Davison, he's and, in. And that's Rashad Davis. No signal yet. Now there's a signal. There Touchdown, Maroons. And Rashad Davis. And they went I formation right up the gut over the left A gap. Touchdown, Dowling, with just under seven minutes to play. And the Maroons one point away from a tie. And, Johnny, who, who was the fullback in there on that play? Because it didn't look like Ian Middleton. Who was it? It was Jackson Miller. Okay, Jackson Miller. Nice lead block on that play as he comes in and, Pops the crease there for uh, Davis, and and uh, he's he's strung, you know, does what Davis does, get in the end zone. All right, the extra point now. Wyatt Jones, the long snapper, number 44 for Dowling, will snap it to Jack Jepson, and Schumacher's extra point is up, and the kick is good, and we're tied at seven. Dowling Catholic and Ankeny here at Duke Williams Stadium, tied at seven here with. Just under seven minutes to go, second quarter. We'll take a break and come back here on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network and CISN. Trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's truckload kickoff event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we double the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The truckload kickoff event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western. More jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Back here at Duke Williams Stadium, Dowling has tied the game at 7-all after the Maroons going on a nice drive. Ten plays, 63 yards, capped off by Rashad Davis's four-yard run. Here's the kickoff. Hankus on the return for, or Hankus rather, on the return for uh, Ankeny. He gets it up to about the 18-yard line where the Hawks will take it first and 10, and the Maroon defense comes on the field with the Ankeny offense. And uh, let's introduce that Dowling defense. Uh, Mason Beaver, Isaac Beaver, and Owen Pins up front with uh, Zach Smith at one linebacker, along with Matt Hanton, Lucas Scigliano, Dylan Manning, and Parker Pearson, the other linebackers. Cornerbacks are Kenny James and Jake Kruger and the free safety Nick Frerichs. And John Chido, a quick note from you before, the Dow- or before Ankeny snaps the ball. Well, Matt hit on it earlier with the Dowling defense. They did a much jo- better job that second series with that defense line shutting off those blocks and being able to get in those running lanes and, and, and letting those linebackers run free. And then they did a good job pressuring the quarterback. All right, here's Anderson back to throw, and he threw it just in front of the intended receiver, and that was their big tight end, Devin Akers. I think he threw it so fast that he didn't get into his pattern. <laughs> he didn't get his head around. He saw the that pressure. Too. You know, they had four receivers on the other side, so they went. They stacked the, the trips formation, the stacked trips formation, and then they had another receiver in the slot. Uh, in on that wide side of the field, they really wanted to isolate Acres over there, and he ran him on kind of a quick slant, and they were just not. It was off, and the, the ball was not even close to the receiver. All right, second down, ten, Ankeny from their own 19-yard line. Reminder at halftime, John Chido will catch up with head coach Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic. I think they got the schematics worked out uh, this week here at Duke Williams Stadium of uh, where the teams will cross. Anderson on the handoff, and he gets it to Hankus, and he's hit and drop. Hankus is hit in the backfield. And uh, they're going to give him a yard up to the 20-yard line. And Dylan Manning just was a lightning rod through there as he came and he hit that pile and, and Hank is right at the line of scrimmage. And that defensive line is now playing at the level they need to play to be successful and, and really standing that offensive line up and giving those defenders that, that second-level defense time to fly to the football. Well, we mentioned Bettendorf leading Ankeny Centennial out in eastern Iowa, 7 to nothing uh, Right now, Southeast Polk. A 14 to nothing lead over Cedar Falls over in Pleasant Hill right now. These are all early first quarter or first half scores. 
It's third and nine for Ankeny. Ball on their own 20-yard line. Here's the snap. Anderson out of the shotgun. Rolls to his left. Now being chased. Fires the ball out. A little swing pass. It's caught. And the receiver makes a nice move, but he's hit and dropped right at the first down marker. And we're going to see where they spot him out of bounds. I think he's going to get it. Dylan Manning, I think, came up on that play. And just and Hankus. Is that Hankus? No, it was Evan Erlmeyer. Erlmeyer made him miss, and, and uh, he got the just enough yards to squeeze by and a couple extra, I guess, here to get a first down. Nice play for the Hawks as they complete that pass. Put the ball right on the 32-yard line. Gain of 12 by Erlmeyer, and that's who uh, Coach Wilson talked about as the handoff goes to Laramie. Daniel Laramie back in there. He's giving Hankus a, a break, and he uh, gets right through the hole across the 40, up near the 41-yard line, gain of nine. Explosive run there for him right up the middle as they shot the A-gap and, and uh, flew up the field, got a pad on, on Manning, and, and uh, that creates a nine-yard gain. Second and one, handoff Laramie again. Right up the gut he goes. He's hit and dropped. Got the first down at midfield as he gained nine on that. And, boy, he's explosive through that hole. Now, he was. The first time we saw Ankeny, Laramie was their number one tailback. He's been replaced by... Hankus, and but I think he wants the job back after a back-to-back nine-yard yeah, runs. I think so too, and you can see they found something in the middle of the field there. They're in the same play essentially twice, and uh, got nine yards about about both times on that play, didn't they? All right, first and ten, Hawks at midfield. Dowling and Ankeny tied at seven here in the second quarter. Hand off Laramie as they had three receivers split out wide right, and the Maroons make the stop and right about the forty. Five yard line, so a gain of five. Hawks picking up chunks of yardage. Pins at the bottom of the pile there as they did get a little explosive. Hanton comes in and finishes the play for the Maroons, as they have found a, they have found a soft spot right in the middle of that defense for the Maroons. Three receivers left, and one to the right. And now Dowling player is offside. They might get Middleton for being offside, and it'll be five yards, and that would uh, be good enough for a first down. I think it was um, Isaac Beaver. Yeah. 97. 97. Okay. So first down. I believe. Uh, oh, second and short. short. Yeah, right. just short. So penalty against Dowling. That's a second offside penalty. So that's telling me uh, the quarterback, Luke Anderson, doing a good job with his cadence. Yeah. Trying he to practice that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they have. And they've caught him a couple times now, that defense being a little over aggressive up front. That's a little of that youth, you know. <laughs> Anxious. Yeah. Anxious. Anxious. Yeah. All right. It's easier to say, just keep your eye on the football. Watch the ball. Watch the ball. Second down and short for Ankeny. Two receivers on each side of the formation. Anderson back to throw. It sets up in the pocket. Now being chased. Slips a tackle. Now on the run and slides inside the, uh, right at the 35. They'll spot him down. And that's good enough for a first down. Again, Anderson is not typically a running threat. So you don't have a, you don't have a spy. You don't have a robber on him or anything like that. And, he is able to roll out, at, escaped a couple tackles, rolls out, sees the opening, and, and gets the first down. Dowling and Ankeny tied at seven. Under four minutes to play here in the first half. 5A quarterfinal playoff game. Handoff goes Hankus back in there. Caden Hankus with the handoff, and he slips a tackle and s- slides forward down to about the 33-yard line, gain of two. And we'll bring up second and eight. Will Ringwelski chased that play down from the back side and was able to get on his legs early and was just waiting for someone to come along and finish him off, and it finally happened for the two-yard gain. All right, second and eight from the Dowling 33. Hankus with the long count and, he, and a quick count, tried to get somebody to offside, and now he did a check with me with his uh, coaching staff. Play clock down to 10 as we have 3.12 left to go. Handoff goes to the tailback Hank as he's hit and drop right at the 31-yard line for a gain of two, and it'll bring up third and six for the Hawks. There they did a better job of forcing him back inside to cut back in, and I believe that was uh, that was uh, Ducharme, I believe, who's in there now, and um, it was able to turn that play back inside, and Manning cleans that up. All right, third and six, Ankeny from the Dowling 31. Tied at seven, 2.40 left to go in the first half. Dowling with three timeouts remaining, Ankeny with two. Back to throw, and now hit and dropped is Anderson. He's sacked back at the 40-yard line. Good job and good penetration, Matt. Who were those that, defensive that linemen? Zach Smith came through untouched, and he 
he is just a fast individual for a big kid, and he was able to shoot through there, and it takes any doubt out of anybody's mind about going for it on fourth down with that big loss, that big sack, and it really creates the, the negative play that the Dowling defense needed. Nine-yard sack by the uh, Dowling defense, led by Zach Smith. Is, uh, Zach now with, it was third on the team in tackles with 36 coming into tonight's nice game. That's fourth down, and yes, that's number 11, Devin Akers back to punt. Their outstanding wide receiver and boots it away with what little wind is out there, and it goes into the end zone touchback. It'll be first and 10 Dowling from their own 20-yard line. Maroons have all three timeouts remaining with a minute 49 to go in the first half as we're tied at 7, Dowling and Ankeny. Let's go down to the Dowling sideline, and that's where John Chido is hanging out tonight. Johnny? Well, that's a big, big stop by the Dowling defense. Uh, you know, Dowling's offense only has had the ball. This is going to be their third time, third possession there. A big stop by the Dowling defense. And no matter what happens, if they don't come away with points, Dowling's uh, offense will, will get the ball at half. So that's a huge stop for the Dowling defense. Yeah, right now you're looking at if we can get three points out of this drive, we're happy because we do get the ball to start yeah. the second half. Dowling yeah. does. So two-minute two minute drill right now for the Maroons. All right, here is... The Maroons are first down on their own 20-yard line, again with a minute 49 to go in the half. Handoff goes to Rashad Davis and fights through some traffic. Goes right over a left guard and tackle and gets it up to about the 25-yard line, gain of five. Clock ticking with 1.35 to go. Dowling changes personnel, hustles up to the line of scrimmage. And now you start to see a little more urgency as they, they go empty here. Three receivers right. And then Cataldo under center. And quarterback sneak, and they're just pushing the pile. And uh, that's they've gotten about three yards. Yeah, that's so that's a a no, a, yeah, they got a little bit, didn't they? So it's a, it creates a third and three. Now you got a minute to go, and you, you're saying you don't want to punt the ball back to them. So here they go. I, I'd say one more conservative play, and then you're going to see if they get the first down here, they're going to open it up. Total a two-yard gain. It's third and three from the 27. Less than a minute to play. Dowling has all three of their timeouts remaining here in the first half. Actually, uh, two timeouts remaining, excuse me. Handoff goes Rashad Davis. He turns the corner and looking for the first down, running laterally, and now finally driven out of bounds. Gets out of bounds. And that'll stop the clock with the first down. Yeah. So Rashad with, picks up the first down. They're going to spot him down at the 32 for a gain of four. Now you're going to see a little change here, I think, with that first down. You're at the 30-yard line, and you got 42 seconds. You practice this a lot, and can you get 30, 40 yards here in, in those 40 seconds? Empty backfield, five receivers, three to the left, two to the right. Dowling going right to left, south to north here at Duke Williams Stadium. Cataldo back to throw, surveying the field, has time. Now looks to run, keeps the football, and trying to get out of bounds, looking for a block, and he does as he crosses the 35 and picked up three, maybe four yards. <laughs> he ran a long ways to get a couple yards right there, and so he – he gains about two. And that yeah. was more of a coverage. Yeah. You can't call it a sack, but no. the Ankeny defense w had very good coverage. They had great coverage, and, and you know, with, with the empty backfield, Dante had all kinds of time. The offensive line gave him the time, and, and Ankeny's playing soft defense, everything underneath. Second and eight from the Dowling 34. Back to throw Cataldo. A quick out pattern caught by Trey Wilson. With 30 seconds remaining here in the half, out of bounds, and uh, that'll stop the clock. Out of bounds, 29 seconds left, creating a third and four, I think it looks like. So um, here they go and try to get this first down and, and convert and keep the ball. Five-yard catch by Trey. That's his first of the night. 29 seconds left, third and three, Dowling on their own 39. Two timeouts remaining for the Maroons. Ankeny showing blitz. Two re three receivers yeah, to the right. Big. We're going to get a jump, I think, on the right tackle. He had a flinch. And penalty is against Dowling for procedure. And that'll back him up five yards. Yeah, they had a, they, again, they ran that blitzer up in there. And I believe Isaiah Seymour just had a little twitch out there. And they watched that pretty close. And it's hard as an offensive lineman, but it, you practice it and you practice it. And, and uh, easier said than done sometimes. So now, third and eight. Uh, Changes the play call here a little bit for the Maroons and see if they can convert. 24 seconds remaining. Game clock now running. Three receivers left, two to the right. It's third and eight. Here's the snap. Cataldo now wants to run. Quarterback draw, and he's tripped oh, up. Oh, he got tripped up. As he uh, crossed the 35-yard line and finally falls forward. They're going to spot his knee down at the 36 for a gain of two. 
Yeah, and they'll let the clock run out, and that's the half. Yeah, unless Ankeny wants to stop it. Nope. That's all the half will end. Dowling will have the first possession of the second half, and we go to halftime, tied at seven. Dowling and Ankeny, the, the Hawks scoring first. They go on a 15-play, 88-yard drive, taking the opening kickoff. Carson Summerfield on a one-yard touchdown reception from quarterback Luke Anderson, 7 nothing Ankeny. And then Dowling comes back. Rashad Davis capped off a 10-play, 63-yard drive with a four-yard run. And both extra points were good. Seven <laughs> all, Dowling and Ankeny. I was watching Johnny try to get Coach Wilson. I don't think he got Oh, here comes Coach Wilson back. All right. He's coming back? Yeah, he's coming back. He's got him. All right. Johnny, go ahead. Take it well, away. Coach, it's a uh, tight ball game. It seems like possessions are a premium there, but what a great stop by the defense uh, for you guys because now you guys get the ball to start the second half. Your thoughts so far? Yeah, you're right. Uh, possessions are going to be – uh, precious, and we just have to take advantage of them, get our bearings about us. They've got big playability. We've got to do a better job against the run game. Thank you, Coach. All right, John Chido with uh, head coach Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic as the both teams go to halftime, tied at seven here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. We want to give us uh, give a plug out to some of our supporters here on Iowa Catholic Radio. They include Catholic Tuition Organization, Mercy One, Dental Associates and Construction Professionals, along with Ashworth Vision Clinic, Skeffington's, Klein Electric, and Catholic United Financial. Mark Amadale, Matt Mandering here in the press box. John Chido on the sideline. And along the line in our network stations, Iowa Catholic Radio and uh, the folks at CISN, we're going to take a two-minute break. When we return, we'll uh, catch up with the first half scoring. We'll also have scores from some of the other games going on in Class 5A district football, the quarterfinals tonight. But here, it's Dowling and Ankeny tied at 7 here at Duke Williams Stadium on Des Moines' east side. And we'll return with halftime after these messages. I'm Amanda with Holtz Plumbing and Heating. Did you know that your water heater is the hardest working appliance in your home? Depending on where you live, hard water and sediment can age out your water heater in as little as eight years. Holtz stocks all the water heater options you would ever need. Multiple tank sizes, styles, and very popular tankless options. Our plumbing professionals will deliver one to your home, remove the old one, and install your new one all in a day's work, even on weekends. For all your water heater needs, let Holt handle that. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Dowling Playoff Football is presented by Annie and Gabe Mitchell Real Estate and brought to you by Clemens Services, Straub Marketing, Homes by DePhillips, Eileen's Cookies, The Tavern, Sioux City Pickermans, Wendy Kriegshauser with Coldwell Banker, the Greater Des Moines Catholic Football League, Kitchen and Bath Company, and the Dana Ramont family. our construction sale here at DeArmond Ford in Enola. We're expanding and setting sales records. Check out our Flex Buys, the new way to buy. Save big with a new F-150 XLTs and the new 2024 Edge. Also save on new Ford Explorers and Expeditions. And check out all DeArmond certified used vehicles, all sold with a one-year bumper-to-bumper warranty. Find out what's going on at DeArmond Ford in Enola. DeArmondFord.com. On Des Moines East Side, as we are at halftime, Dowling and Ankeny tied at seven. Mark Abadil, Matt Mandring, and John Chidel with the uh, broadcast crew tonight, along with the, the folks from CISN. I want to thank Justin Wolber and the staff out there, uh, the Graber family, Graby family, and uh, whoever else is out there, and so bringing you the pictures and the audio. And we're going to go through some scores here at halftime. Let's take a look at our stats here between Dowling and Ankeny. As uh, last report, thank you uh, for that, Justin. As he just texted me the uh, Waukee score, you can add this seven to six. Waukee leads Valley, and I'm guessing that is a first half score, Matt. So hopefully that'll complete uh, your docket, yep. if you will. But uh, we'll take a look at the uh, statistics for the first half. 
Dante Cataldo, three out of four passing for 16 yards for Dowling Catholic. No interceptions and no touchdowns. Leading receiver for the Maroons, Trey Troyer had that big first down catch. Trey with one catch for 11 yards. Trey Wilson, one catch for five yards. And Hank Brown, one catch uh, for no yards. Rashad Davis, leading ball carrier for Dowling. He has 10 carries for 59 yards and a touchdown. Dante Cataldo, five carries for 15 yards uh, in the first half. Luke Anderson, the Ankeny quarterback, was seven out of nine passing for 65 yards and a touchdown, no interceptions. Leading receiver for Ankeny is Evan Earlmeyer, four catches for 38 yards. Andrew Brandhorst, one catch for 20 yards for the Hawks. Caden Hankus, one catch for six yards. And Landon Hutchins, one catch for, or check that, uh, Mason Rudolph, one catch for one yard. Leading uh, rusher for the Hawks in the first half, Daniel Army, seven carries for 46 yards. Caden Hank is eight carries for 19 yards, and quarterback Luke Anderson, two carries for nine yards. Let's look at the numbers here at halftime with uh, Dowling leading or Dowling and Ankeny tied here at the half. As look for it. total first downs in the contest, Dowling with six, Ankeny with 12. The Hawks. passing yards up. So Dowling with 15 rushes for 74 yards. Ankeny 17 rushes for 53 yards. So total yardage, Dowling with 90 yards in the first half. Ankeny with 118 yards. Maroons with 3 of 6 on first da- third down conversions. Ankeny 7 for 7 on third down conversions. And uh, Matt, you got to look at some of the scores. I think we're, we're trying to get most of them through. We appreciate all the help out there. We're trying to get caught up, but it's uh, Southeast Polk is up on Cedar Falls 21 to nothing. Probably getting close to half there. And uh, as you said, Waukee is up on Valley 7-6. That's with at, two minutes left into the half. Two, Waukee, minutes, we'll, two minutes left in the half. Yeah, Waukee. And, and then the last score we got from Bettendorf, Hankany Centennial is Bettendorf up by seven. All right, that's a look at uh, some of the numbers we have at halftime. Again, we're tied here, seven all, Ankeny and Dowling uh, in the quarterfinals. It's the last uh, night for outdoor football. Everything moves to the Dome next week. It'll be the semifinals in all classes. And again, we want to thank our supporters, including Catholic United Financial, Klein Electric, and Skeptics Formal Wear. Down on the field, we have uh, John Chido. And John, has anybody walked up to you and wanted to, to visit with you? And if, if so, who are they? I have Bronte Wells. Can you hear me, Mark? I do. I got you. I got okay. you. So Bronte Wells, a Dowling graduate, part of the Dowling family, and uh, he was an integral part of the, the Dowling football team, as, and as well as the community. He went on to play at UNI and had a great career there. And and Bronte, uh, you know, I see you on Friday nights uh, coming to the game to support your your team, and and just, just kind of talk. You you actually got to talk to the team a couple weeks back too, but just talk about what the Dowling community means to you and. And, and everything that goes on with it. It means a lot. Honestly, Dowling is a family. Uh, when I went and talked to the kids, man, it was all about making sure that I went back and showed them to let them know that they're always supported, man. The alumni, we love our school, we love our team, we love our coaches, we love our program. And, uh, we're always behind them, we always got their back, and we just want to see them succeed always. And at the end, and at the end of the day, man, we got a standard. Here at uh, Down Catholic, so uh, at the end of the day, man, we gotta work, we gotta be consistent, execute always. Well, Matt uh, uh, and Mark uh, Bronte has a, a earbud in too, so you guys can uh, oh, ask him. Good. Uh, oh, so we can? Yeah, oh, yeah. We can heckle him a little. Yeah, bit. yeah absolutely. Hey, yeah, Bronte, it's good to see you, man. You're looking in good shape. Are you playing? Are you right now what your playing weight was at UNI and at Dowling? I'm a little lighter. Uh huh. That's what I thought. Strong. You know. A little quicker, a little faster. Oh, yeah. I'm still in great shape. You've had a lot of memories along the way. Your high school football career, I'm sure, going back to middle school and through college. What are some of the memories you remember about high school, some of the games? Because you're part of those state championship teams that uh, we had the pleasure to call. Oh, man. We can go back to when I first transferred in, sophomore year. Uh, we had one that year, but my junior year when I actually got to play with the group of guys, man, at the end of the day, man, we just had a lot of great guys, a lot of great leaders and great coaches, and when we all put it together and won, man, we came out with the ring, and then we followed it up. Senior year, 13-0, and 
finished it right at the dome, man. My home. Panthers, <laughs> baby. <laughs> New home, that's right. A lot hey, of good memories. Yeah, Bronte, this is uh, Mr. Rainer again. And, and, you know, talk about that transition. You know, how did Dowling set you up to be successful at the next level? Oh, man. Let's we'll start with academics because, you know, you're a student athlete. Yeah. Academics first, man. Uh, at the end of the day, Dowling is truly like college to me, man. When I was at UNI, uh, man, I was very prepared and I would honestly have to say Dowling made college a lot easier. I mean, like really, really, really easy. <laughs> well, because of the study habits you had at man, Dowling, right? Study habits, professors, uh, man, study table, just all the resources that we have at Dowling, man, there's no way that you that anybody should fail ever, man. It, on or off the field. It, and Bronte, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes, like during the off season. I remember you playing basketball. I remember oh, you yeah. being in that weight room, and this is all throughout the summer. I know you weren't a baseball player, but you've got to find a time to put the work in in the off season, and you were a big part of that, along with the academic work. Can you say that one more time? Sorry, you went out. Oh, Johnny's in a bad spot. I figured that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard baseball, and I heard put the work in. Put the I, work in. You you didn't participate in baseball, but you put the work in in the summer. Yes, sir. And, always. And, uh, you know, talk about that, the grind in the off season. The off season, oh, at the end of the day, look, you're going to wake up early, and you're going to get to work, and then you're going to go find more work, and more work, <laughs> and more work. <laughs> And then you're going to go to sleep, and then you're going to wake up and do it all over again. At the end of the day, like I said, we execute. We got a lot of studying. We got a lot of preparing that we do. We got a, a lot of grind. And uh, at the end of the day, man, that's what we live for. Like I said, we have a standard here at Dallin Catholic, as you guys all know. And that's why I still come back here to support these guys, man. I want to make sure that they're living up to the standard, uh, off season, in season. Any moment that I'm here, man, I always try to come and check in and show the kids a lot of support and a lot of love, man. It means a lot to me. What class are you, uh, Bronte? What year did you graduate? I graduated 2016. There you go. 2016. You know, and I, 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 Bronte knows this because we talked about this before, but Bronte was one of the first kids I met after I started at Dowling. Yep. And, uh, I remember you in. Well, yeah, that's right. And then uh, <laughs> right in the stairwell. Open arms. Well, yeah, and right in the stairwell, we talked for a little while, and it just gives you an indication of what kind of kid, you know, what the expectations are around here. How is that now parlayed for you to what you're doing now, Bronte? Honestly, it all transfers over. Being a student athlete at Dallin Catholic and then bringing that same attitude, same work ethic, being coachable, basically the standard and the expectations never changed. The only thing that changed was the industry. That's it. It all transfers over, and at the end of the day, I had a lot of success at Dowling. I had a lot of success in college, and now I'm having a lot of success right now in life. Standards and expectations never change. And I'll tell you what, you're having a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun being around you during those years. I can't believe it's been that long. It's going to be almost 10 I years know. here pretty I know. <laughs> hey, well, hey, you're hey, getting hey, old, hey, man. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> I know. Almost. I'm 25. I turned 26 here yeah. in uh, yeah, there two you weeks. Go. Can you line up against some of these guys and be ready to go? Sorry, say that one more time. Can you line up with some of these guys that you uh, see out here and ready to go? Yeah, I, think <laughs> not, they, I know you're not eligible. They, they'd shake a little bit. Yeah. I think it wouldn't be good. One moment. It would be good. <laughs> say it one more time. <laughs> oh, you must have, we have a connection problem. But Bronte, can uh, you line up and play right now, you think? Oh, most definitely. I thought so. I am in great shape. <laughs> <laughs> you look like it. <laughs> hey, I listen, mean. my friend, thanks for being here. No problem. Uh, does Chido have somebody else down there he wants to talk to, or he just found you? I, I think, uh, how do you follow up with this? You, uh, don't. you don't. Yeah, I mean, this is this is great. I'm, I'm glad Bronte's here. Yeah. Well, we are. And uh, Bronte, you look good. Yeah, and, and, appreciate uh, you. Yeah, keep, best of luck to you, young man. And, thank you. And bring good luck around these guys that are right behind you there. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. That's why I'm here, man. Got to support. Bronte Wells. There's a blast from the past with John Chido on the sideline. We're going to take a two-minute break and return to Williams Stadium. The teams are back out. We're tied at halftime, Dowling Catholic and Ankeny. Here at uh, Duke Williams Stadium on Des Moines East Side, the 5A quarterfinals. The winner moves on to the semifinals next Friday. Mark Amadeo alongside Matt Mandering, John Chido, and our special guest at halftime, Bronte Wells. And we'll return after these messages here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Hey, it's 
too? We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some weight. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. Dowling Playoff Football is presented by Annie and Gabe Mitchell Real Estate and brought to you by Clemens Services, Straub Marketing, Homes by DePhillips, Eileen's Cookies, The Tavern, Sioux City Pickermans, Wendy Kriegshauser with Coldwell Banker, the Greater Des Moines Catholic Football League, Kitchen and Bath Company, and the Dana Ramont family. Hi, Joe the Car Guy, head coach of Westside Auto Pros. When your car is on injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. So bring it here to Westside Auto. I have the team of experts that can fix every automotive injury. Whether it's a fractured joint, a broken part, or if your car just got its bell rung, we'll do a complete physical to make sure your car is game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to Westside Auto Pros and we'll get you back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you got your dog in out there. Move it, move it, move it. It's our fall savings event now at DeYarmid Automotive, Knoxville. Selling all new Chevy, GMC, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and Rams. Incredible savings on the new Chevy Silverado and Sierra 1500. Save big on new Chevy Equinox. Get up to $10,000 off MSRP on new Ram 1500s. New Jeep Gladiators, up to $10,000 off MSRP. And new Grand Cherokees with 10% off MSRP. It's the fall savings event at DeYarmid Automotive, Knoxville. And welcome back to Duke Williams Stadium here on Des Moines East Side, home of the East High Scarlets and Grandview University. Alongside Matt Maindring, I'm Mark Amadil as we get set for the second half as Dowling and Ankeny tied at seven in this Class 5A quarterfinal. And we appreciate uh, John Scheidel and uh, interviewing Bronte Wells at halftime. And Matt, we've got some scores that have changed since we last uh, gave them out. You bet. Southeast Polk is now up 21 to 7. That game is probably pretty close to half. Uh, Valley, we get, we got word blocked the field goal and ran turn it back for a touchdown 13 to 7. They're up on Waukee. And Bettendorf extended their lead over Centennial. They are up 14 to nothing. Okay. And we'll get set for the kickoff. Dallin will defend the south end zone and go right to left as they will receive as the Hawks will kick off here to start the second half as uh, Ryan Harrington tees it up. And uh, Johnny, uh, any any thoughts? Appreciate the interview with uh, Bronte, but any thoughts here at the second half? What adjustments what may we see by either by both teams? Well, I think for Dowling, they, they have to they, they have to clean up the penalties. And when they were able to stay offensively, stay ahead of the chains uh, and move the football into that tempo, they're, they're fine. But the, like we talked about, the uh, possessions are a premium. And I think that Ankeny's going to keep spreading Dowling up out uh, and, and take advantage of those one-on-one uh, -on -one matches. Right, here's Dowling on the return. Zach Smith from near the goal line returns it to the 21-yard line, and that's where the Dowling offense will start first and 10 from the 21-yard line. Matt, your thoughts on these uh, halftime adjustments that we uh, may see by either team? Uh, Johnny's right. I mean, it's, it's clean it up, and, you know, they had a lot of success running the football, Dowling Catholic did on that last drive. And as Coach alluded to, you know, the possessions are going to be precious in this second half, and it's about getting up. You know, it's going to be the team to get ahead here. Can Dowling take this drive, get up, and put the pressure on the other team? And so whichever way it goes here, first series is a big one. All right, Dante Cataldo out of the shotgun. Hand off to Rashad Davis. He wears number 24 and gets across the uh, 20 and finally wrapped up after a short game, maybe up to the 23-yard line. Offensive line for Dowling, Kyle Rockers. Left tackle, Joe Freilach, the left guard. Matt Shelton, the center. Nate Agos, the right guard. And Isaiah Seymour, the right tackle. All seniors for the Maroons. Will Leifner is a senior tight end, wearing number five. And Charlie Darnell is the other tight end, number 81. And the uh, fullback is Ian Middleton, number 45. And Jackson Miller, number 47. So that's a second down play from the 23-yard line. Second and eight. Here's the snap. And Cataldo fakes the handoff to Davis, looks left, now being chased, rolls to his right, being chased, and he's going to be dropped back at the 10-yard line. 
And they're going to call the Cataldo down. The ball came loose back at the 11-yard line. That's a 12-yard sack. They ran the boot play there, and, and uh, he came out and saw nothing. And he didn't have – they had coverage on it, and uh, they had pressure, and he rolled back into it. And, and Ankeny kept the pursuit on, and a uh, big play by the Ankeny defense to create a third and a long, and a long one, third and 20 here. Yeah, the Bruins will have uh, – Five wide receivers they usually bring out, including Trey Wilson, along with Hank Brown, Curtis Horace, we'll take out the tight end. Here we add Trey Troyer. Empty backfield, and it is third and long. Third and 20 for Dowling. Here's the snap. Anthony rushes four. Cataldo rolls to his right, still on his feet, slips a tackle for 20. Still on his feet, 25, and he's near first down. Well, out of bounds as the down marker goes down. He needed to get to the 31, I think he's just a little bit yeah, short. Just a little bit short. He makes a nice run there as he showed his, his speed and accelerated there as he got in the open field. Uh, a four yards short, and so now uh, Dowling's forced to pump, but it gives him a little more room here. 16-yard run for Cataldo, but he needed about four more yards, or five more yards, so it's fourth and uh, five for Dowling. Ten minutes to play here in the third quarter, tied at seven. As the Bruins will put the punting unit in, Wyatt Jones along snapper and Zach Smith back at his own 12-yard line. Dowling going right to left, good snap. Smith gets it away. Kick the turnover right about midfield. Takes a Ankeny bounce and runs will down it right around the 48, 49 yard line. The Hawks now 51 yards away from the end zone. They'll bring out their offense for the first time. Tied at seven, 9.45 to go, third quarter here in this Class 5A district playoff game here on Duke Williams Stadium. Mark Amadale, Matt Mandarin, John Scheidel. Let's go down to John Shadow before the Ankeny offense takes the field, John. Yeah, like, like we just talked about, you have to stay ahead of the chains. And Ankeny made a great defensive play there and put him dallying in third and long situation. You don't have much in your playbook for third and 20. And, you know, Dante Catello made a nice, uh, did a nice job with his feet, getting those yardage back and, and making it more easy to punt the football. But Ankeny's going to start with good field position. Yeah, they certainly are. They'll split out uh, Evan Earlmeyer and Devin Akers at the uh, – to the right of the formation as they go left to right. And one receiver to the left. Back to throw is Luke Anderson. Now being chased. He fires the ball out and he threw it threw it away incomplete. It did pass the line of scrimmage, but nobody was in that area. The pass is incomplete. He's lucky that ball they get intercepted. He just kind of threw a ball up in the air there as his arm kind of got hit with the pursuit from Dowling. And uh, the ball laid out there pretty lazily, but it did fall to the ground. We got penalty against Anka. They give the illegal procedure sign, but normally when they do that it's blow the play dead. They blow the play dead. And John, you got another you got an idea. My, this illegal procedure was a penalty and it's, it'll back up Anka to their own 49, 44. Yeah, usually they do blow the play dead, but it must have been right as the play snapped. I, I don't know on, on that one. Illegal shift, uh, but I didn't see anything really to, that stuck out called motion I, I think is what the call was so yeah procedure was the signal but I, I don't know if it meant that nonetheless here's Ankeny with a first and 15 they'll get it to their uh, tailback Ankus turns the corner and he gets up to the 47 yard line so he gets three of those yards back as they bring up second and yeah 10. it was just a world of people coming around this corner we got number 72 Jack Dorfler the junior slow to get up and gets up and gets back in the huddle as an offensive lineman usually does yeah. so it takes a lot to get those big horses out of there Evan Spence Jack Dorfler left tackle and left guard respectively for Ankin the center's AJ Heck he's a senior Tristan Mullis the lone returning starter number 52 the right guard and Lucas B Roth the right tackle number 71 and now they give it to the tailback and that is once again, Hankus, Caden Hankus gets across midfield. He'll be shy of the first down. Brought down to Dallin territory at the Maroon 46-yard line. So a game of seven. Kenny James comes in from his cornerback position and makes that play as they found that little seam in the, in the middle of the field again. And uh, they're able to get Manning off on that play and, and get him sealed up. And so that's been a, something they, they've had it. The advantage. 35 Ankeny back to throw. They fire it out and the pass is caught. And that is their tight end slash uh, receiver with a nice catch, Devin Akers. And a sliding catch for a first down at the Dowling 38. A little slant route back to over there. And it's that one's you know pretty tough to defend when you have that uh, 
thrown right in there, no coverage underneath, and um, nice play for the Hawks. Eight-yard catch, first down, Ankeny at the Dowling 38. Tied at seven as we approach the eight-minute mark of the third quarter. Handoff goes to the tailback. That's Daniel Laramie as it's been the one-two punch of Hankus and Laramie, and now Laramie taking over, and he gets the carry. Driven down at the 34 for a gain of four. Uh, Looked like Mason Beaver on the stop there for the Maroons with some help uh, from the linebacking core, but uh, he got on the legs of uh, the running back there. And Again, they're running A-gap, A-gap, A-gap. They just got a lot of success right in the middle of the defense. All right, Mason Randolph split out wide left. The handoff goes to Laramie, and he kind of dodges around. Penalty flag down as he goes down inside the 30, down to the Dowling 28, gain of six. This might be coming back. Yeah, they need to get a hold on Dylan Manning. We, so we haven't been able to call his number. They've been able to get a pad on him, and right there they might have grabbed those pads. So penalty is against Ankeny, as you called it, uh, Coach Maindering. That'll back him up five yards. 7.30 left to go third quarter as they... Mark the penalty from the spot of the foul, and it's a 10-yard holding call on the Hawks back to the Dowling 44. And that'll wipe Second off the game. The yeah, and so now it's, you know, changes the play situation here, you know, and Ankeny's had some success with the run, but they've been also getting be able to get the ball through the air a little bit. Second, second and 16, they put the screen pass on and hit and drop. Jake Kruger makes the stop right at the 40-yard line as a receiver for Ankeny caught it, but he was immediately hit, and that was out of the backfield, Daniel Laramie. Daniel Laramie, they set the screen up perfect. Dowling was bringing the blitz, and a great read by Jake Kruger as he came up like a bullet to stop that play and uh, create the big game. That was a one-on-one -on -one thing right there. So here we go, third down, third and 12. From the Dowling 40, Ankeny with the football. They go left to right, two receivers left, two to the right. Quarterback is Luke Anderson, a junior. Here's a snap. Back to throw he goes, has pressure, fires the ball out. It's caught by Akers. He's shy of the first down, and he's dropped right about the 32-yard line. He'll gain eight, but he'll be shy of the first down and bring up fourth down and about four for the Hawks. Dowling only brought three on that one, went coverage on the play, and he was able to still find Akers in front of the linebackers. And uh, here they go. You kind of expect this right now. You come here to win, and you're going for it on fourth down. Fourth and four. From the Dowling, 32. Hawks going for it, as you mentioned. Three receivers right. And Akers split out to the left, and I think Ankeny's going to call a timeout. We'll see as the play clock is down to 10. Time yet. They're going to widen Akers out. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage over there with Jake Kruger wearing number one for Dowling. They're going to wind this down and call timeout. So we'll take one with them. 5.50 to go third quarter. We're tied at 7. Dowling and Ankeny back after this one-minute break on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. New trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's Truckload Kickoff Event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The Truckload Kickoff Event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. All right, we're back here at Duke Williams Stadium, fourth and four, Ankeny from the Dowling, 32. Back to throw it is the quarterback, Anderson. The pass is caught on the far sideline, and it looks like they've got enough for a first down on the play. What a play that time by Ankeny, and I think that was Akers on the reception. It was out of the backfield, or no, they're 21. I think it was. Um, or that's Ar Laramie. Yeah, Laramie out of the backfield. Kenny James comes up and gets the hit on him, but he's able, his momentum carries him forward far enough to get the first down. He jumps in front of the sticks. So a five yard reception, first and 10. Ankeny at the Dowling 27. Tied at 7 all. And the handoff goes to. 
the tailback, and that's Hankus with it, and he's hit and dropped. He made an initial surge over the left side. They finally got it down near the 30, or check that 21-yard line, gain of six. And again, Ankeny is really trying to shorten this game, and this drive is allowing them to chew a lot of time off the clock again, shorten the football game, and limit the touches for the Dowling offense. And and this, again, this drive is doing exactly what's, uh, what the Hawks want, and that is consume a lot of clock. This is the tenth play of this Aikney drive. It started back at their own 49-yard line. Here's Anderson back to throw out of the shotgun. Looks over the middle, fires the ball, and it is caught inside the five-yard line. Dropping down to his knees, Evan Erlmeyer on his knees and rolls down to inside the five for a first down. Right at just over the fingertips of Ducharme at that linebacker position over the middle, and he just couldn't quite get his fingers on him. And a uh, nice catch down there for the completion inside the five-yard line. 16-yard gain, first and goal. Ankeny, and they're going to spot the ball on the four-yard line. For a 17-yard completion, first and goal, Hawks. And they will send three receivers to the right. Quarterback is Anderson, and he has... Hank is to the left. Back to throw is Anderson. Fires in the end zone. The pass is caught. Touchdown. Ankeny to the left side as they fire it up. And it is caught by the big guy, Akers, on the touchdown. Ran, a, ran an out play there. He gets two yards in the end zone. Hits to the pylon. And, and uh, Anderson put it right on him for the touchdown. So that's the second touchdown pass by Luke Anderson. First time that Akers has caught a touchdown tonight. And the Hawks now lead it 13 to 7 with 4.16 to go here in the third quarter, pending the extra point. Kinnick Voss on the hold. Long snapper is Lucas Beeroth, and the extra point is up by Ryan Harrington, and a penalty flag down on the and line of scrimmage. Call motion on Dowling. Offsides on Dowling. Offsides on Dowling. That's a dead, it's a dead play, so they get the choice of either uh, kick it. They're going to have to – no, they have another play. They, they, they can't accept the extra point because the ball right. is blown dead. So they so got, that's what got to do it again. Watch the – they change personnel. They're going for two, and they're not. Yeah, they're not. So it'll be – so they'll re-kick it here. Harrington will attempt the extra point. Kenny Voss on the hold. Ball is down. And the extra point is up and good. Ankeny leading 14 to 7 over Dowling. 4.16 to go here in the third quarter from Duke Williams Stadium. We'll take a timeout and be back here on CISN and the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Western lets your UTV power through the storm. The Impact V-Plow and Impact Straight Blade with the features the pros demand. Custom tailored for your UTV. And to keep your work top notch, rely on the Tornado UTV Hopper Spreader. Now that's a job well done. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Hey, welcome back to Duke Williams Stadium. Dowling on the return. We're just getting across the 30 up to about the 31-yard line as uh, Dowling a very nice return on that kickoff by Zach Smith. And let's go down to John Chida with uh, Ankeny taking the lead, 14-7. John, a 12-play, 51-yard drive by the Hawks, capped off by Devin Akers, four-yard touchdown reception from quarterback Luke Anderson, who's thrown two touchdowns tonight for the Hawks. Yeah, and you got to credit what Matt was saying earlier is, is Ankeny is, is – is doing a great job with their game plan. They're staying with their plan, and they're, they're taking time off that clock and moving the ball and able to convert and, and put points on the board. And, and uh, Dowling needs to do something to offensively to get this momentum back. 
Well, momentum stays with uh, Aiken. He is on first down. They hand it off to Rashad Davis, and he loses a yard back to the 30-yard line. They'll bring up second and 11 as Bruce tried to run left that time, Matt. That was Connor Kaiser on the stop as he flew across the field and was able to get Rashad from the backside and, and in that in that zone read um, alley and makes a big stop there. So Dowling went out with uh, three receivers to the right as uh, Maroon's playing from behind again. The Maroon's got the, the game tied right before half, and now they trail again. And now Cotado on a quarterback draw, keeps the football, and he's spun down right at the 35-yard line for a gain of five. Yeah, design draw play right from the snap, and that gives him a, a, a run at it and uh, spreads the defense out, and they run up right up the middle, get a nice push. A decent gain there, five yards, and creates a third and six. He's bringing in their personnel on third and six as we approach the three-minute mark of the third quarter. Dowling with three receivers to the right, two to the left, empty backfield, and no tight ends. Catalo at quarterback. Here's the snap. Dante looking left. Fires it down, and the pass is overthrown. Incomplete to Curtis Forrest, who was the intended receiver, and he was uh, well guarded by Sam Sandvig for the Ankeny Hawks. Sam Z comes on the blitz from the backside and, and gets to Dante just as he's releasing the football. Made him rush it just a little bit, which you know disrupted the timing on that play. And sent, or the Hawks get the three and out and uh, get the ball back in, in a hurry. They bring it fourth down, fourth and six for the Maroons. Zach Smith into punt. About 39 yards of punt this season. Leave their formation and they get the punt away on a good snap. Smith gets it away, going away from the uh, returner. Gets a Dowling bounce inside the 25, still spinning inside the 20. And they'll finally roll dead about the 16 yard line. So a great punt by Smith. And Ankin with the first down at their own 16 yard line with 2.38 to go here in the third quarter. And Ankeny leading Dowling by the score of 14 to 7. Mark Emmadale, Matt Mandring here in the press box. Let's go down on the sideline. And that's where John Chido was at, Johnny. Yeah, the linebacker came off the edge there late. He came up uh, uh, to the line of scrimmage right as the ball is going to be uh, snapped. And he was untouched and, and unabated to the quarterback, uh, Cataldo. And, and I think it forced uh, you know, a little bit higher throw and didn't get him the time that he needed. But... You know, Ankeny offensively doing a great job spreading them, spreading Dowling out and, and utilizing that running game. The Hawks with the first down at their own 16 after that 49-yard punt by Schmidt. And Hank is, uh, is the ball carrier for Ankeny on first down as they put the ball on the ground. Caden Hankus and uh, Laramie have uh, done double duty and he carries it up to the 20-yard line for a gain of four and the Hawks are doing just what they want to do get yeah. that keep that clock running milk, milk the clock run the ball into the into the middle of the defense and they've been getting four yards they're going to keep doing it all right on second and five handoff Hank is this time he stood up right at the line of scrimmage no gain of the play so to bring up third and six for Ankeny on their own 20-yard line, leading 14 to seven over Dowling Catholic. That time, Dylan Manning came from that linebacker position and got him at the line of scrimmage along with Owen Pins in the middle of that defense. And uh, this is a big play because you know time is time is ticking away, and so you can say you got a whole quarter to go, but this is a big one. Well, Earl Meyer and Akers have come up big on third downs for the Hawks. We'll see what happens here. Three receivers to the right, two to the left, em empty backfield. Anderson back to throw, has pressure, looks left, throws left, and he threw it behind his intended receiver. That was Hankus out of the backfield incomplete. Broken up by uh, Jake Kruger out there and playing coverage, and uh, Dowling gets the three and out at the pass and stops the clock. And so they get the ball back and should, you know, with that bounce on that punt, helps flip the field a little bit here for the Maroon offense, potentially. Well, Johnny, I kind of feel a special teams play coming up here. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah you're exactly right. I was just thinking the same thing, Mark. I'll just leave it at that. Akers gets the punt away, and Faircat signal for it, and I'll let it bounce. Takes a Dowling bounce towards midfield, and that's where Dowling will have it. First and 10 from the 50-yard line, ball down by Jacob Moorfeld. I was thinking if Trey Wilson could get under a punt yeah, yeah. and uh, get his hands on it, maybe making something happen, but it wasn't to be, and it'll be Dowling. It's offense on the field. John will keep you here. The Maroon defense coming up big, getting a three and out on that last drive. Yeah, and it's the first two two uh, downs there. They, they kept them in, 
you know, they, they had a nice stop on first down, second and long, and then it was, it, you know, nice stop on second down with the running game, and, and it took away that short pattern that, that Anthony's been doing so well with that one-on-one -on -one matchup with the linebackers, and Dowling was able to convert defensively. And off Rashad Davis right over the A-gap, and he's uh, brought down inside the 45, down to the Hawk 44-yard line, gain of six, and Dowling starts from midfield and picks up six yards. Yeah, you're going to get behind Rockers and Fralick on that left side, and, and uh, it gets a little dance at the line of scrimmage and explodes forward behind those guys, pushing everybody forward, and uh, you're going to see the, a little bit of a tempo here as they start to pick up the pace. Curtis Horace and Hank Brown split out wide the right. Top of your screen if you're watching on CISN. Here's a snap out of the pistol formation. Hand off Rashad Davis. Goes left. He's near first down. Has a first down inside the 40. Still dragging tacklers all the way down to the 35-yard line. He got about five extra yards, yeah. man, after he thought he would stop right at the uh, sticks. And boy, yeah. has that ever got the crowd into it. Yeah, it does. That offensive line was just churning, and you got Davis plowing behind him. And right now, he's a hungry runner. First and 10, Dowling from the Ankeny 36-yard line. Pickup of eight in that last play. Pistol formation. And the give is to Rashad. And he waits, and now he picks his spot. He goes right over left guard and picks up a couple down to the 33-yard line of Ankeny. Likely the last play of this quarter as we wind down to four seconds. And yeah. 14-7, Ankeny up ahead. And we'll take a break. We come to the end of the third quarter here at Duke Williams Stadium on Des Moines East Side. The fourth quarter in this class 5A playoff game is upon us. Alongside Matt Maynard, I'm Mark Amadil, and John Chido on the field, CISN, televising Iowa Catholic Radio Broadcasting, back in one minute for the fourth quarter here on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network and CISN. It's our fall savings event now at DeYarmid Automotive, Knoxville. Selling all new Chevy, GMC, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and Rams. Incredible savings on the new Chevy Silverado and Sierra 1500. Save big on new Chevy Equinox. Get up to $10,000 off MSRP on new Ram 1500s. New Jeep Gladiators, up to $10,000 off MSRP. And new Grand Cherokees with 10% off MSRP. It's the fall savings event at DeYarmid Automotive, Knoxville. All right, we're back here for the fourth quarter. Dowling and Ankeny. The Hawks lead it 14-7 over Dowling. The Maroons with the, the football, second and seven, and the handoff goes to Rashad Davis, gets inside the 30. He's put down there. The line of scrimmage was the 33, and Rashad takes the ball for four yards down to the Hawk 29. That'll bring up third down and about three. Third and three as he spun out of that first that first tackle and was able to spin ahead and get the first, get the um, extra yardage. Creates a third and short, and here we go. All right, pistol formation. As Dowling now will move Jackson Miller, the uh, fullback, over, and now Dowling wants a timeout, it looks like. Timeout, Maroons. We'll keep it here as we just underway here in the fourth quarter. It's third and two for Dowling at the Ankeny 28 after this timeout. Let's as we bring in John Chido and the gentleman got a great game. This is a big possession. I think, Matt, you mentioned it earlier. Big possession for the Maroons. Not so much a big play, but to, to get something out of this possession, especially a touchdown, to tie it up as Dowling trails by seven. Yeah, is that to me, Mark? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm asking the scores. That could be to you, Johnny. I'm right. sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you're in. You're going to go for it on fourth down if you don't get it here. So, you, you know, it, it, you're going to, I would expect something on the ground. It's been working well. Uh, there's no need to panic. Uh, you know, the offensive line has been controlling the line of scrimmage this possession. So, you're in four down territory. You got third and three. I think you're going to expect a run here if you don't get it. I think you're going to get right back up on the ball and go quick. And you'll have like a, a fourth and manageable. But Dallin just needs to keep controlling this line of scrimmage and 
and keep running the football here. All right, here is the handoff to Rashad Davis, and he dives towards the 25-yard line and he gets the first it down. Looks like he's right on the first down. Matt, you were looking at uh, yeah. getting some scores. Give well, we got an update. Uh, the Bettendorf Ankeny Centennial game is now 14 to seven in the third quarter. Valley remains ahead 13 to seven, and the score out of Southeast Polk is still 21 to seven. Southeast Polk with the lead, and uh, Bettendorf with the lead, as, as you mentioned. All right, here's Dowling with the first down. Hand off, Rashad Davis trying to find a hole, bounces outside, and he may have gotten a couple yards inside the 25. We'll spot him down near the 24, maybe the 23. And the Maroons are going to their ground game, and uh, boy, these two teams are certainly mirroring each other. Yankees had more pass receptions tonight than Dowling, but uh, the Maroons are getting their ground game going, and they move. That's a three-yard game by Rashad. Yeah, and they, and Dowling has become a little bit one-dimensional as far as not much in the passing game at all, but they've been finding success with the run on this series, and you can expect them to stay with it. All right, two tight ends and a fullback, two receivers left. Hand off Rashad Davis. He goes right over the A-gap and twists his way down to the 20-yard line for a gain of three, and will bring up third and four for the Maroons. And we've got an injury down on the field. This is uh, Max Shelton. Max Shelton. I think with that, center. With that knee. And now we got a stoppage to play. Both teams going to their benches. So we'll take a one-minute break. Justin Wolber on CISN. We'll take a one-minute break here with the injury timeout. 10-16 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And it's Ankeny leading Dowling 14-7. They'll attend to the injured Dowling center. And we'll return after this one-minute break here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some wins. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating smack. It's our construction sale here at DeArmon Ford Indianola. We're expanding and setting sales records. Check out our Flex Buys, the new way to buy. Save big with a new F-150 XLTs and the new 2024 Edge. Also save on new Ford Explorers and Expeditions. And check out all DeArmon certified used vehicles, all sold with a one-year bumper-to-bumper warranty. Find out what's going on at DeArmon Ford Indianola. DeArmonFord.com. Hey, we're back here at Duke Williams Stadium out of the timeout. Runes with the substitution, the handoff by Dante Catalba. Rashad Davis was fumbled and recovered by Ankeny. And what a blow it was. And Dowling losing their center. And then on the next possession, the mesh between quarterback and the running back. Which yeah, the, the, fumble, man. the read in that mesh and Dante and, and uh Dante and, and Rashad got tangled up a little bit and it looked like Dante was trying to keep and uh, the ball ends up on the ground and, and Centen or the Hawks recover and a big turn here. This is a, a big series for this defense now. They are backed against the wall. Yep, ten minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Ankeny takes over on their own 22-yard line. Ankeny offense now on the field. 14 to seven's our score. Ankeny with the lead over Dowling, and the give is to the tailback, and that's Daniel Laramie. And Laramie, from his own 22, gets up to the 25 for a three-yard gain over right guard. He is cut down by Manning and uh, at the line of scrimmage and falls forward for a two-yard, uh, two-and-a-half-yard gain. Second down and seven for the Hawks. As they huddle up and take their time, and you can bet they're going to chew every, every second off of that game clock now. Runes trying to keep them in third and long if you can, but it's second and five right here. Three receivers and a bunch to the left, two tight ends for the Hawks. They'll flip-flop Devin Akers to the right side, and now he'll have single coverage out there. Luke Anderson at quarterback, the junior with the snap. Looking, looking, now flush from the oh, top. Oh, there's the hold. Yeah. And holding on Ankeny is Anderson now out of bounds right around the 32-yard line. This whole play will come back as uh, holding on the Ankeny offensive line 
Yeah, they had they had Keevy Fort wrapped up on the edge as he wasn't allowed to get to the quarterback there. So they'll back that up 10 yards. That's a big play and uh, lets the Dowling defense, gives them a little space here. Yeah, play went for eight yards and a first down. It's all coming back as it'll be a spot foul on the uh, holding. And the ball will be spotted back to the 15-yard line. So about 17 yards on that play. Third and 17 for the Hawks. And they're taking all the time they can while the clock is stopped due to the penalty. Ankeny with two receivers, split out wide right, one to the left. Anderson at quarterback to give us to the tailback. And that's Laramie across the 20. And he's hit and dropped there. And he'll bring up fourth down for Ankeny. That'll be third down. We'll be third and long. Yep. Third and 17. Yeah. Good. Third and 12, third and 11 here as he gets about six yards on that play as they lead him up the middle. They had two runners. And so now you've got a third and long here. Clock running 8:44. Ankeny up 14 to 7. Big play right here for the Maroon defense. Well, we've mentioned this during the game. Their big play receivers have been Earl Meyer and Akers. Let's see if that's the case here. One back in the backfield. Dowling showing blitz, and they'll back off the blitz. They'll give it to Barmy. Turns the corner, and he's hitting stacked up at the 25. If he's shy of the first down, clock will continue to run. It'll bring up fourth down for the Hawks, and the punting unit will come in. So the Dowling defense did their job there. And you could you could figure, coach is sitting over there on the Ankeny side, saying, "I'm not going to put the ball in the air and give it a shot." And I'm going to take our defense has been playing great football. We're going to be conservative. We're going to run the football. Now I'll punt it away and and uh, get the Dowling, get our defense back on the field, which has really stymied this Dowling offense. Well, these and coach talked about it throughout the year. You know, these special teams when people are punting, they're punting away from your best returners. Now Trey Trey Wilson is back at his own 45-yard line, waiting for the kick of Acres, and a line drive, and this is not returnable as. Inside the 40, it rolls, and all the way down to the Dowling 33. So the Dowling offense will start there, first and 10 from their own 33-yard line with 7.30 remaining, fourth quarter. And Dowling trailing 14-7 to to Ankeny. Maroons and Ankeny with two timeouts remaining. Let's go down to the Dowling sideline, and John Chido, get us caught up. Last visit with you before the injury to the Dowling center. Uh, Max Shelton, and then the fumble after that play. Yeah, it, you know, Dowling had success running the football that last possession, and, and, you know, it's been the story of the game for them, the penalties and, you know, the, the big turnover there. Uh, but, yeah, plenty of time. There's no need to panic. You know, you're still able to run the football and do things, and, and I would see it's implemented a little bit of the passing game as well here, Mark. All right, handoff goes to Rashad Davis, and he's uh, tripped up as he crossed the 35 up to the 37-yard line. So he gains four to bring up second and six. And Carter Smith was the one that came in for Max Shelton at the center position, and he played, you know, a number of games in the middle of the season in there. Well, Max went down early in the year, so this is a this is a spot where he's used to coming in, and uh, and and being able to. It's a natural progression, and I see Max Shelton up on the sideline doing a little movement, so he's he's not he's. Able to come back in potentially. Back to throw Catalo. He fakes the handoff, fires over the middle. The pass is caught. First down, Dowling. Hank Brown right over the middle at the Ankeny 41 yard line. So the Maroons haven't completed the pass. I'm not sure the whole second half they do there, and it came at a great time. Yeah, and then finally, Max, you know, they, they get the Max protection and only had a couple of receivers out in the pass. And, and Hank Brown comes over the middle. Dante's patient and then zips one to him for the big first chunk play for this Dowling offense in the second half. 22-yard gain, first down Dowling at the Ankeny 41-yard line. 6.35 to go here in the fourth quarter. Ankeny 7, Ankeny 14, Dowling 7. Handoff goes to uh, Rashad Davis, and he breaks the tackle. He's in the secondary, and he finally is dropped right about the 32-yard line. He'll gain nine to bring up second and one, and what a move by Rashad. Let's see what the spot is here. It, just a hair short, so they are going to make it third and, or yeah, second, second and one. one. Yeah. Second and one. That one was almost broken as he saw the crease and was able to keep going. That's one of the few times he had a crease. Yeah. He hasn't had much uh, no. gain. Six minutes to play. Second and one Dowling from the 
Hawk 32-yard line. Here's a snap out of the shotgun to give to Rashad Davis. He's got the first down, and he lunges forward down to the 27, a gain of five. And Ian Milton is just coming in there and being a hammer right now in that offensive line and coming up and, and creating the little bit of space that Rashad Davis needs to get up into the middle. And you can just see the Ankeny defense starting to clap, collapse a little bit. I see Rashad hitting the inside and bouncing it out to the edge for a wide open field here shortly. Maroons put Curtis Horace as one receiver, Hank Brown the other on each side of the formation. The give is to Rashad Davis over the left side, slips a tackle, still on his feet, and finally driven down right about the 22-yard line, maybe the 23, and depends on his knee, a gain of at least three, maybe four. As they grind it down, the clock is running down to 520, under 520, and uh, here we are second and about five, so he gets a nice gain on first down and uh, makes the play selection a lot more wide open, but again, it's hard to get away from that run right now. Four yard gain. Now they'll move the tight ends to the left. Powell out of the shotgun, two receivers to the right, and one back in the backfield, that's Rashad Davis. They give it to Rashad, looking for a hole, still on his feet, still grinding, still on his feet, and finally stacked up. And they're gonna get forward progress to about the 18 yard line. So he'll get about five on the play. It'll bring up third and about one. Third and about one. And that play looked like it was going for no gain. And, and that offensive line just kept churning as well as Davis did on his feet. And uh, got, that, got that yardage. Now Davis comes out, Zach Smith I'm assuming is in. Yes, Zach Smith comes into the football game. So it changes the, the offense slightly. Yeah, Rashad's uh, messing with his helmet. Something happened there. So Schmidt is the tailback. Two receivers right. And the give is to Smith, And he's hit and dropped in the backfield back to the 20-yard line. He'll lose two. And it'll bring up fourth down and three for Dallas. Fourth and three, and this is trying to be the fastest helmet repair that you can get. And <laughs> you get Rashad back out there. Now he is ready. So here we go, fourth and three with 3.40 to go. Big play for Dowling. Game on the line, 3.40 and the game clock running. Different personnel coming in as Dowling brings Jackson Miller in at fullback. We'll also have Ian Middleton, Middleton in there. At, at another fullback, another tight end. Bunch formation, fourth and three from the 20. Cataldo out of the shotgun. Gets Rashad Davis in motion and now timeout called by Dowling. We'll take a one minute break and return with 3.23 to go fourth quarter. Ankeny 14, Dowling 7 in the Class 5A quarterfinals of high school football playoffs on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's truckload kickoff event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The truckload kickoff event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. All right, we're back here at Duke Williams Stadium. It's fourth and three Dowling on the Ankeny 20. Ankeny leading 14 to seven, 323 to go fourth quarter. Game on the line here for Dowling. Runs going for it. Back to throw Cataldo, fires the ball out. It's incomplete as the receiver was running a fly pattern, Hank Brown, and Dante thought he was gonna run a stick pattern or stop pattern, yeah. and he didn't. And it'll be ball turned over on downs by Dowling to Anthony. Yeah, wow. There's the miscommunication there, and, and there's the play, and nobody there where that ball went to, and so now it's up to the defense. You got one timeout, and uh, Anthony's gonna run the ball three times here. You, if you figure it out, you might get about a minute, minute and a half left um, with the one stoppage in play. Well, a tough break there for the Maroon offense, Johnny, at a wrong time. Yeah, miscommunication there with the receiver. 
uh, and, and, and Dante uh, on what route was, was run there because, Matt, like Matt said, the ball was thrown, uh, not even what the receiver was even looking at. All right, the Ankeny with the ball on their own 20-yard line. The handoff goes to Caden Hankus, and he's hit and dropped. He may have lost a yard. He did. He lost two yards back to the 18-yard line. It'll bring up second and 12, but clock is not in Dowling's favor. The Maroons have one timeout. And Anki's going to milk that play clock all the way down. Like I said, you know, it, you know, you're going to run down to about, you know, with each play here, somewhere around a minute, minute and a half, you might get the ball back. Hawks will split three receivers to the right. And they're tight in. They go with two tight ends and one back in the backfield, and they give it to Hankus again, trying to turn the corner to the left side, and he's hit and dropped by Kruger. Jake. Squares him up, gain up to the 21 yard line. So we'll bring up third and nine for Ankeny from their own 21. Down with one timeout remaining. So now it's going to run down to about 150, somewhere in there. You want to play, get the timeout, and then the punt team will come on. So 140, one, about 130, minute and a half, you're going to see the ball. You could see the ball back in your hands. You know, these up-tempo teams, and Dowling's had to do it too when you're trying to kill the clock. Now you got to, you know, regress and wait, and you're waiting for that play clock to get into single digit. Ankeny may be burning the timeout Yeah, here. they're going to chew all of this one up right here. All right. And the Hawks will take a timeout. We will with them. Minute 50 to go in the fourth quarter. Ankeny 14, Dowling 7. We'll return as it'll be uh, third and long for the Hawks when we return on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. I'm Amanda with Holtz Plumbing and Heating. Did you know that your water heater is the hardest working appliance in your home? Depending on where you live, hard water and sediment can age out your water heater in as little as eight years. Holtz stocks all the water heater options you would ever need. Multiple tank sizes, styles, and very popular tankless options. Our plumbing professionals will deliver one to your home, remove the old one, and install your new one all in a day's work, even on weekends. For all your water heater needs, let Holt handle that. Uh, some of the things I've learned from sports are being a good leader, and that means not always just saying what's right, but showing by example. I've learned that being a good role model is so important because there's many little eyes on you, and they watch everything you do. So as long as you're doing the right thing, then they will understand that that is what they're supposed to be doing also. What I really have learned is strong leadership and self-discipline. All right, third and nine for Ankeny from their own 21-yard line. One minute, 50 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The Hawks trying to kill the clock. They lead 14-7 to seven over Dowling here in the fourth quarter. The handoff goes to the tailback, and he's hit and dropped. Shy of the first down. Now Dowling will burn their final timeout with a minute 43 to go. We'll keep it here, and it'll bring up fourth down for the Ankeny Hawks. Mark Amadeo, Matt Mangering, and John Chido tonight here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISM. We want to thank Mercy One, the Catholic Tuition Organization, Dental Associates, and Construction Professionals, along with Ashworth Vision Clinic. John Chidel, your thoughts? It'll be fourth down for Ankeny from their own 25-yard line, and one more chance maybe for the Dowling offense here. Yeah, you know, you're going to get the ball back here, so you want to make sure, number one, you don't rough, rough, rough the kicker and uh, and get a, get a penalty like anything like that that could give... Uh, Ankeny a, a, an automatic first down and, and then if once they do get the ball off you want to make sure you fill the ball if you can and don't let it bounce for that extra yardage and, and so those are the two most important things here and and then you got the you, you're, you're okay you have your two minute offense they've been in this position before they just need to execute that's all it just comes down to execution all right let's see if we give you a quick score here I got uh, Valley leading Waukee 20 to 7 at the start of the fourth quarter in Waukee tonight. So Valley Tigers trying to do what they did last year in rally. Now the Hawks with a fourth and five. And Centennial's going to hit 21 to 14. Over Bettendorf. And uh, they rush the kicker, but he gets off a beauty. And fair catch signal for by Dowling and Trey Wilson at the 40-yard line. And that's where Maroons will have it one last time. Minute 37 to go. Dowling a first down at their own 40-yard line. And uh, John Chido, what has to happen here? What are they talking about on the sidelines here? Well, you know, the clock stops on first down. So you don't need to get huge chunks. You just need to convert, you know, the, those 10-yard patterns, 
what what not and protect and identify where the blitz is coming from because they're going to send pressure especially when Dowling goes empty here you got to identify that and, and execute your blocks and just just make the right read and, and make a throw and, and, and just you got to execute all right we'll see what happens here we go empty for empty backfield Cataldo back to throw swings the left side the pass is caught by Trey Wilson for a short <laughs> gain up to the 44 45 yard line gain of four and the Maroons are just going to try to work those corner routes, uh, Matt, to stop the clock. Yeah, you do those five-yard outs, and you can walk your way down the field as much, you know, as much cushion as they get, and then all of a sudden you might be able to slide one over the top of it, but you're just trying to get some yardage, give yourself an opportunity to get inside the 30-yard line and give yourself a chance here to get it in the end zone. Right, Four-yard gain, second and six Dowling from their own 44-yard line. Back to throw Cataldo, looks left, throws left, and... Trey Wilson with the catch in Ankeny territory at the 49-yard line, a gain of seven. Again, the same play, same look, and uh, you're trying to get that quick stuff out there, move the ball down the field as Ankeny is just sitting here in a prevent defense and not letting anything get behind him. They get two deep safeties, five linebackers across the middle, and three up front, so they are... <laughs> they might um, even have they have a, yeah. a dime formation yeah. with three yeah. three uh, down linemen. Back to throw Cataldo, he has time, rolls to his left, and he'll throw it away. Stops the clock with a minute 25 to go. Again, Dowling out of timeouts. Ankeny has one remaining. And will bring up second and 10 Maroons with a minute 25 to go from the Hawk 49. 14 to seven is our score. Ankeny with the lead. A pair of touchdown passes by the Ankeny junior quarterback, Luke Anderson. One to Carson Summerfield to cap off the opening drive of the contest. And one in the third quarter to Akers from four yards out with four and a half minutes left in the third quarter. That's the difference in the ball game. Dowling a touchdown run by Rashad Davis in the second quarter. Second and ten. Cataldo back to throw and he air mills everything incomplete as his intended receiver that time was uh, I think Matthew Kerner over there. Yeah, I believe it was Kerner, and he did have him open on the sideline and just did let that ball sail just a hair as it went over Kerner's head, and now you got a third and ten. So they got plenty of time as you're sitting here. you got two to get, you get two downs to get a first down. That's right. Everything's four down territory yeah. for the Maroons. Dowling will move some personnel in. They'll bring in a switch Kerner, and it'll be Kerner and Trey Wilson split out wide left, two receivers to the right, one back in the backfield. That's Rashad Davis. Here's the snap. Back to throw, and he overthrows his intended receiver incomplete, and that was Trey Wilson will bring up fourth down for Dowling. Fourth and from the 49-yard line of Ankeny, fourth and ten. Fourth and ten, and here you go. Here's your season down to one play. A minute 18 to go, down seven points, and uh, you, need, you need first down. So you gotta, you're thinking ten yards. You're going to run a number of patterns that get you that ten yards, one across the middle, a couple on the edges. And uh, Ankeny's going to be sitting on it at that 10-yard mark. All right, Curtis Horace and Trey Wilson split out wide left. Three receivers to the right, empty backfield. Ankeny showing blitz. They have rushing three, and they'll rush four now. Back to throw Cataldo. Fields pressure. He's hit, and ball is loose, and they're going to call it incomplete, and that'll do it. The Ankeny Hawks, with a minute 12 remaining, will take over on downs. And Dowling's season is in jeopardy right now. Yeah, it's in the books now as they will just come out and take a knee. And uh, Ankeny came out and, and uh, took it to them tonight and, and really played their ball game from start to finish and uh, didn't allow anything, you know, Dallin to get any momentum offensively. There was there was no momentum at all offensively for the Maroons, just that one series. The Hawks held a Dowling team that averages just under 35 points a contest to just seven points tonight. Now the victory formation for the Hawks. Uh, to take another knee as quarterback Anderson will kneel down. Do one more and might do it. 64 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Ankeny 14, Dowling 7. Hawks may have to snap the ball just a couple more times. And uh, hats off to head coach Jeff Bauer in his first year as a head coach. Brand new staff. And the two teams will split the regular season. Dowling winning the regular season game. Week three was 35-14 Dowling over Ankeny at Valley Stadium the week after the Dowling Valley game. But tonight, second round of the playoffs, and it's the Hawks. The Hawks are going to move on to the Unidome. And we'll get you caught up with some of the other action. And Dowling's season will come to an end. The Maroons had a 
tremendous year. Nine wins and two losses. Unfortunately, they fall, they fall one game shy of the Unidome. And that's a final. 14-7. to Ankeny defeats Dowling in the Maroon season is over here in high school football. And, Matt, it's, it's always a tough feeling, yeah, especially for those seniors. And there's a yeah. ton of them out there, 42 seniors introduced on senior night, and their season and careers may have come to an end. And uh, just a couple updates. Right now it looks like it's going to be Southeast Polk, Valley, and Ankeny Centennial joining Ankeny in the Dome next week. So both Ankeny teams will uh, make the Dome if these scores hold up. And uh, wouldn't that be something? That, once again, last year was an all-CIML Final Four, and this is going to be that way too as both teams shaking hands and uh, congratulating one another. And hats off to Coach Bauer and the Ankeny Hawks. Uh, again, the final. Ankeny 14, Dowling 7. We're going to take a two-minute break along our network lines. That includes Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. So I'll prepare our producers for that. And I want to thank Justin Wolber for CISN, did a great job. He actually manned a camera the other night, or tonight, <laughs> with uh, um, Griffin Graby. So we appreciate those two doing the camera work here at Duke Williams Stadium. And Brady Grimm, our student producer for Iowa Catholic Radio. And our thanks once again to Klein Electric, Catholic United Financial, and Skefton's Formal Wear, and Ashworth Vision Clinic here on Iowa Catholic Radio, some of our supporters. Again, we'll take a two-minute break. Final score. Ankeny 14, Dowling Catholic 7. The Hawks move on to the Class 5A semifinals next Friday at a time to be determined. And we'll return with our postgame show live from Duke Williams Stadium on Des Moines East Side here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Dowling Playoff Football is presented by Andy and Gabe Mitchell Real Estate and brought to you by Clemens Services, Straub Marketing, Homes by DePhillips, Eileen's Cookies, The Tavern, Sioux City Pickermans, Wendy Kriegshauser with Coldwell Banker, The Greater Des Moines Catholic Football League, Kitchen and Bath Company, and the Dana Ramont family. Western lets your UTV power through the storm. The Impact V-Plow and Impact Straight Blade. With the features the pros demand. Custom tailored for your UTV. And to keep your work top notch, rely on the Tornado UTV Hopper Spreader. Now that's a job well done. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. New trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's Truckload Kickoff Event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The Truckload Kickoff Event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. And welcome back to Duke Williams Stadium here on Des Moines East Side. As final score tonight, it was Ankeny defeating Dowling Catholic by the score of 14 to 7. The Ankeny Hawks advance to the semifinals of Class 5A District Football as they go to the semifinals next Friday, either at 4 or 7 o'clock at the Union Dome in Cedar Falls. Dowling's record, they conclude the season with a record of 9 and 1 and a number 2 seed. And Ankeny improves its record to 8 and 3 and a number seven seed as the Hawks advance. And as Matt, you mentioned, the Ankeny Centennial looks like they're going to win out in Eastern Iowa. And if they do, both Ankeny teams are in the semifinals. Valley, who was almost on the verge of one game away uh, and maybe one play away from being uh, not in the playoffs of all, they're ahead at Waukee and then Southeast Polk uh, with a late score. So I'll let you get caught up in the scores, and then I will uh, run down the final scoring here tonight. Yeah. Right now, the, those are the scores that I have, too. So it's 21-14 Southeast Polk 
and uh, over Cedar Falls and then walk, uh, Valley 20 to seven, yet over Waukee, all these games in the fourth quarter. And then uh, the Centennial Bettendorf game is now 28-14 Centennial. Uh, looks like they've extended and are gonna win that football game. All right, and let's take a look at the uh, statistics in this contest. First downs, it was Dowling with 14 and Ankeny Centennial 17. Maroons rushed the ball for 138 yards tonight. Centennial rushed, Ankeny Hawks rushed the ball for 95 yards. Uh, Dante Cataldo, six out of 13 passing. Uh, no interceptions and no touchdowns for 49 yards passing. And Luke Anderson, 13 out of 16 passing with two touchdowns for 111 yards. So total offense tonight for Dowling, 187 yards. Ankeny with 206 yards of total offense. Dowling had one turnover, and that was the fumble in the second half. Dowling was 5 of 12 in third down conversions. Ankeny, 8 of 12 in third down conversions. Dowling 0 for 3 in fourth down conversions. And Ankeny, 1 for 1 in fourth down conversions. So let's look at some of the stats there. Uh, leading rusher for Dowling was Rashad Davis, 24 carries, 117 yards, and a touchdown tonight, the lone touchdown for the Maroons. Cataldo was eight, eight rushes for 36 yards. Leading receiver for Dowling, Hank Brown, two catches, 22 yards. Trey Wilson, three catches for 16. And Trig Troyer, one catch for 11 yards in this contest. And now for Ankeny, Luke Anderson at quarterback. He went uh, 13 for 16 passing, 111 yards, and two touchdowns. Leading ground gainer for, uh, leading rusher rather for Ankeny, Daniel Laramie, uh, 12 carries, 68 yards. Caden Hankus, 15 carries for 39 yards. And quarterback Luke Anderson, two carries for eight yards. Leading receiver for the Hawks was Evan Erlmeyer, five catches for 55 yards. Andrew Brandhorst with two catches for 24 yards. And uh, Devin Akers, two catches for 16 yards and a touchdown reception. Also in there for the Hawks, Hank, Hank is out of the backfield, one catch for six yards uh, to lead Ankeny. So the Hawks win it uh, with just over 200 yards of total offense, 206 yards for total offense, Dowling with 187. Let's go down on the sideline, and that's where John Chido has head coach Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic. Johnny? Well, Coach, a hard, tough uh, fought game, and I know it didn't end up the way you guys wanted it, uh, uh, but you guys battled to the end and uh, you, you had opportunities there, and you credit Ankeny, they came out top tonight. Yeah, they did, uh, and they deserve all the credit. Um, you know, our, our kids prepared pretty well throughout the course of the week, and especially the latter part of the week, and, and we simply didn't get it done. And, and you know, as, as the head coach, you take responsibility for that, and, and uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. But uh, really too bad. Uh, great group of kids that I've, I've worked with, and... and uh, you know, it's uh, you didn't want it to end this way uh, for them, but it does. And as as we said, Ankeny deserves an awful lot of credit. I thought they made plays. We didn't. We had the turnover. Uh, they didn't. And, uh, you know, that makes it pretty hard. You know, a large senior class, it, you know, it always is not great when they when they go out like this. But, you know, what, like you said, what a great group of kids. And watch them grow over the last four years but you know the sun's going to come up tomorrow you guys are going to go back to work and it's always tough around here with these uh with the with with, with fall teams each and every friday night you, you know it's, it's always been a hard-fought game what well, is uh you know you mentioned all the seniors and uh they've been a great group uh i can't say enough good things about them and and uh it's it's certainly heartbreaking and and we didn't want it to end like this but uh, Ankeny outplayed us, and, and they, as I told the kids, they don't give out those uh, tickets to the Dome, and, and uh, you got to earn them, and, and uh, I thought Ankeny earned it, and we did. Thanks, Coach, uh, for taking the time this year to, to, uh, to give us uh, interviews and, and things like that. It's, it's been great uh, to be part of this program. Yep, thank you. All right, that's uh, John Chida with head coach Tom Wilson. Uh, Post-game comments following Ankeny's win over Dowling. 14-7 to here at Duke Williams Stadium in Des Moines. Congratulations to the Ankeny Hawks. They head to the Unidome. They'll join their crosstown rival, Ankeny Centennial, who's going to win out in Bettendorf tonight. And those two may be matched up in the uh, first semifinal. And it'll be Southeast Polk and Valley in a, the other semifinal. Times, either 4 or 7 o'clock next Friday. And it's an all-CIML Final Four. 
And uh, Matt, uh, you, you ran through some of those scores, and uh, we appreciate that. So congratulations to the teams, and I'll tell you what, it's tough. There's uh, 42 seniors out there. Uh, some were a big part of the program as far as playing time, but they were all a big part of the program, I should say. But uh, they all had their roles, and that's what's going to be tough because they may have, uh, uh, you know, some of them have ended their uh, football career, at least uh, for, for the meantime, and it's a tough way to go out on uh, in a post game, uh, in a playoff game, rather. You know, the you never know when that last game is going to be, and that's why you, you you battle till the end. You you play for the person next to you, and uh, we were talking about it with some kids today. Some of these seniors, we had a little meeting, and and we were discussing some things. You never know when your last game is going to be, and uh, you got to treasure the moments and and enjoy the ride. And and uh, it's the you won't remember you'll remember the game you know 15 20 years from now but you're going to remember the good times more than anything and that's the the friendships and the bonds that these kids have made and this is a great group of kids these seniors well congratulations to head coach jeff bauer and the ankeny hawks they'll take an eight and three record into the semifinals. Uh, we're going to take a break we'll come back on the radio side with iowa catholic radio for our our, our final thoughts but we want to thank the cisn group group uh, tonight led by uh, justin wolber And, of course, uh, he did a great job on the camera, too, along with Griffin Gravy. So we appreciate that. And uh, we'll uh, say so long on the CISN uh, live stream. So, again, the final tonight, Ankeny defeated Dowling 14-7 here at Duke Williams Stadium. Ankeny moves on to the 5A semifinals. Mark Amadale, Matt Mandarin, John Cheidel, and for uh, Justin Wolver and Griffin Gravy, uh, so long on CISN. We'll be back on Iowa Catholic Radio after this one-minute break.